Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome uh, to the regular meeting of the Mayor and Board of Trustees. It is, of course, a 9-11, uh, and uh, tonight uh, we have a, a, of course, we start with the Pledge of Allegiance uh, on Patriots Day. Uh, the lucky student who was chosen today was uh, Cameron Ali Khan from Gower West Elementary School. Now, Cameron, uh, per his uh, principal, uh, son of Jamel and, and Trisha, uh, sister Alia is, is a student also at Gower. His favorite, school, uh, his favorite subject at school is math. Out of school activities are gymnastics. Uh, his favorite event is the high bar, baseball, and football. Uh, and his, his favorite vacation was to Mexico. He likes swimming in the pool and going to the beach and spending time with his family. Uh, and that was, that was also fun too. So I ask him to, to uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you for letting me lead the pledge for you tonight. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Have a good meeting. Thank you. I think that was the first, too, uh, to thank us for, for being here. That was very kind. All right. Roll call, please. Trustee Francis. Here. Trustee Model. Here. Trustee Paveza. Here. Trustee Mattel. Here. Trustee Snyder. Here. Trustee Scalpa. Here. Mayor Scrub. Here. Now, under the residence comments section, I just want to uh, uh, let everyone know that you know, all residents who would like to speak tonight are asked to sign in on the sheet that's over here. Uh, and we're going to have two different uh, two different microphones when the time comes. You're welcome to talk uh, during the public comments, but I'd, I'd recommend uh, that you hold off until the that agenda item uh, is actually on that is actually being discussed, which time we'll welcome your input. So, I uh, for now we're going to move on to the. Uh, oh, sorry, residents. Are there any residents that'd like to address the board at this time? Mayor, point of order. You, you were suggesting that residents that want to speak related to the school issue should wait to the agenda topic. Is that correct? That's true. It applies really to, to everything, but that's a good, great clarification. Thank you. Okay. Anyone would like to address the board this time? Okay. See no one. We'll go to consent agenda. Uh, all items uh, listed uh, with an asterisk are considered to be routine by the village board and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a board member or a citizen so requests in which event the item will be removed. Under minutes, we have approval of regular board meeting of August 28, 2017. Uh, ordinances, uh, we have 5B, uh, 6B, approval of an ordinance amending section 2509 of chapter 25, liquor control of the Burridge Municipal Code Class H liquor licenses. Resolutions, we have adoption of resolution declaring village property surplus uh, real, real property and authorizing sale Property address is 11680 German Church Road, otherwise known as the Pump Center property. Under considerations, we have 8B, approval of recommendation to purchase replacement commercial uh, water meter accessories. 8C, approval of recommendation to award contract for uh, uh, was ornamental metal sign uh, panels for County Line Road bridge enhancements. D, Approval of recommendation to award contract for police department uh, window replacements. E, approval of vendor list in the amount of $143,357.11 for all funds, plus $250,066.38 for payroll, for a grand total of $393,423.49, which includes a special expenditure of $22,653.59 to uh, Schroeder Asphalt Services for 2017 Motor Fuel Tax uh, Program August payment. May I have a motion to approve the following items on the consent agenda? That will be uh, 5A, 6B, 7A, 8B, C, D, and E. Motion? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Trustee Snyder? Yes. Trustee Schiappa? Yes. Trustee Francis? Yes. Trustee Model? Yes. Trustee Paveza? Yes. Trustee Mattel? Yes. 6 0. Okay, under ordinances, we have 
Uh, consideration of an ordinance granting a special use approval for the continued use of our automobile sales and service, Z08 2017, located at 101 Tower Drive, Global Luxury Imports. Doug? Yes, this was uh, tabled from your last meeting at the request of the petitioner. Uh, the Planning Commission had unanimously recommended approval of this request for special use. It's a renewal of the special use for automobile sales and service at 101 Tower Drive, Global Luxury Imports. The petitioner, I believe, wanted to address the uh, Village Board on one particular aspect of the Planning Commission recommendation. The staff had recommended to the Planning Commission that the condition requiring uh, uh, reporting of sales figures to the Village staff be modified to indicate that they would only provide those numbers if requested by the staff. Uh, the the um, Planning Commission initially agreed to that, but then decided that they wanted to recommend that uh, mandatory reporting, and I believe the petitioner wanted to address that uh, to the village board. Okay. So a lot of people came to listen to you tonight, Gary. Yeah, more, more so than the past, <laughs> um, which was a good thing. Nice, uh, good nice evening, you, by the for the way. record, Gary Grasso. I'm here representing Global Luxury Imports. Um, the third, uh, the D item of reporting every 180 days. Uh, I'd like to um, ask the board to consider eliminating that um, requirement. Uh, I don't think <clears throat> it is uh, necessary. I think Global Luxury Imports has been a model citizen. Uh, corporate citizen has contributed to the village, has met all the requirements over the years arguably is a business that has been uh, put through requirements that no other business has been required to do in the past, uh, uh, but has, has performed in, in admirably, uh, I believe the record would show. Um, the uh, items B and C would be uh, uh, calendar sales of 20% of automobiles sold uh, under uh, $10,000 uh, to 29999 uh, 999 and the other is other automobiles that must be sold for $30,000 or more. I think we've met all of those thresholds and the requirement would have us do that every six months. And speaking with staff, I think there's also uh, some burden on the staff to follow this all the time. It isn't that we don't want to do this. Uh, we think that on our record uh, we should be relieved of that or at most maybe do it for a year or two, the next couple of years, but after that let it drop off. Uh, I know there was always some concern of the citizens, and of course the concerns of the citizens always come first. Over the years about whether or not Global Lux would, uh, would live up to these requirements, I think you've seen this over the last four years that they've met it uh, all the time and, and consistently. So um, the request, and that is what, what it is, it's a request uh, that item D be dropped and that there be no such requirement unless staff asks us to do so, which we'd be more than happy to do and we would respond uh, in seven or 14 business days. So that's our only request. So uh, just for clarification, it was, it was uh, recommended to keep it as it was once a quarter? Is that, is that uh, the, yeah, the plan commission oh, adjusted to a half uh, every six months? Every six months, yes. So it was, it was adjusted to six, so twice a, twice a year to do it routinely <laughs> as opposed to, uh, I suppose his request for not, for not at all. Okay, okay. I, Questions, uh, uh, board members, do you have any questions of, uh, or for clarification or opinions? Talked about eliminating uh, the need uh, with computerization and everything else. How much of an effort is it really to, uh, to continue doing it? Um, it's an effort, Al. Uh, it's something that in ordinary course of business they wouldn't necessarily do. It's also uh, the staff has to then look over the records. We have to obviously pr provide the backup. It's not simply saying uh, we've met the thresholds. Uh, so we have to show that we've met the thresholds, which requires showing all the sales uh, every six months, uh, both for those between 10,000 and 30,000, and then all sales over 30,000, many of which, of course, are on, done on the internet. It's, it's not the kind of dealership where people walk in and buy a car uh, off the floor. You can do it course, but most, most of the time it's over the internet, as a lot of things are nowadays. So there's a certain quantum of uh, staff time that has to be put into it. Um, I, it's kind of a, a good behavior thing. Uh, we've met it uh, all along. 
I think staff uh, might concur that it's uh, unnecessary or certainly puts a burden on the staff also. So we're looking for some further relief from it um, based on our record. For Doug, what's, your, what's the staff's uh, uh, opinion on this? Well, we would, I, I would prefer not to have to call them every four months or six months and ask them to provide the numbers and then to, um, and then to have to, to, you know, process the numbers to match our compliance requirements. I would prefer to be able to just, uh, you know, be able to, to call them if we have reason to think there's a problem. You know, if we get a complaint that, you know, they, someone has advertised a car for sale for, you know, a lot of cars for sale under the price threshold, we could call and say, please provide us your sales figures. Or, uh, you know, if there's some other evidence that would lead us to believe there's a problem, we can ask for the sales figures. But um, it's not a great burden, and we can certainly continue to do it if that's the board's preference. But it seems to be a bit of a burden for the business owner and a little bit of a, you know, staff to always monitor that in perpetuity, um, something that doesn't seem necessary at this point to me. How long have they been in business? Uh, four years now at that at this location. They were in another location for a few years as well Does he model so it was um, I'm not a big fan of putting you know uh, Restrictions on businesses especially businesses that are acting responsibly and good community members You know I, I like to let them do their thing and hopefully contribute to the society and bring bring in taxes But it was my understanding this was put in uh, in, in response to residents concerns and people were concerned about <clears throat> was this dealership going to be selling the right kind of cars that were a fit in our neighborhood and was this the type of dealership we wanted and you know they, like we said they've been open for quite a while and we certainly haven't haven't seen or heard complaints I have not any complaints that those types of vehicles or that there was a problem going on there you know, I personally again uh, would, would be interested in relieving the burden on the business but there's been no complaints am I correct and they've always met the standards correct they have more than met the standards. They far exceeded the, the minimum price well, that's, standards. That, that's a good thing. Yes, it is a good thing. Which is a good sales tax right. generator. And of it, course, as a, f a footnote for everybody that knows, um, Global Lux could have sold a lot of these cars off premises, so to speak, outside of Burr Ridge. They specifically wanted to come here and do it, which is, as Doug alluded to, why they moved to the uh, location they're in right now four years ago. Uh, and and frankly, the village encouraged them to do that for the sales tax reasons. So it's been a, uh, they want to be in Burr Ridge. They want to be where they are because I think it uh, shows off very well, especially at night. Uh, and, uh, and of course, the village wants the sales tax. So I think it's been a, a, a good partnership. And they've been top, consistently a top 10 sales tax producers. Right. Yes. So given, so for the record and for, based on their record, we'd ask to be relieved of this burden that is a little extraordinary and of course uh, it can be monitored and if Doug or anybody at staff wants it we would gladly provide the information within seven or 14 business days and they had, Doug had answered the question I wanted to see if they had met all the requirements regarding reporting and then in that reporting did they meet the requirements the minimum thresholds of sales yes so you had answered that, that question so I just want to see Snyder Mr. Grasso said they're a model citizen. Went to Doug and Doug smiled and said, well, I have to make the call. Well, there's, there's two things when you say model citizen. So the only thing I ask is, okay, and you stated, quite frankly, if we ever requested it, we would be happy to in seven to 14, 14 days with no problem. I agree with Zach, the restrictions are one thing and to relieve the businessman, that's one way. But if we as a village board ever request it, Mr. Grasso said that they'd be so happy to deliver within 14 days, I'm fine with it. See, Francis. Question of Doug. Doug, you, you mentioned you had to call them to get these reports in the past. I thought they were supposed to submit them voluntarily uh, on a regular basis. Well, they did submit them voluntarily. Sometimes I had to remind them. Oh, and, okay. <laughs> but I didn't have to. I mean, it wasn't. Uh, you know, they never refused or hesitated. No. It was always more. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did. Let me get that for you. They didn't. Ref I mean, it was part of the special use permit that yes. they had to submit these reports, so they couldn't refuse. But, okay. All right. Thank you. Do I have any um, anything for the discussion? 
Um, I mean, um, I think it would be a good idea to have them, if not every six months, just give a report once a year at least. It's just nice to have like routine um, reports. That way, uh, Doug doesn't have to request them. Okay. Come in a timely fashion, and then, I mean that's fair enough. We all, you know, once a year, it's okay to take inventory and stop. Mm -hmm. Well, does anybody um, have anything else to add, or, or want to make a motion to either effect? I would make the motion to um, uh, approve the uh, change in the ordinance, including the petitioner's request to strike that uh, that that part of the uh, ordinance. Second. I would, I would second the motion with the fact is that Mr. Grasso has very openly stated if we ever requested it, they would provide within 14 days. Okay. okay. Just, just to clarify, the, uh, the uh, request was to modify the condition to provide the sales numbers upon request from the village staff. Uh, that's Any such uh, time that village staff. That effect. Any other discussion on that motion? There's been a motion and a second on the table. Okay, may I have a roll call, please? Trustee Model? Yes. Trustee Snyder? Yes. Trustee Schiappa? Yes. Fr Trustee Francis? Yes. Trustee Paveza? <coughs> yes. Trustee Mitel? Yes. 6 0. Okay, motion passes 6 0. Thank, thank you, Gary. Okay, we're going to um, move on to the. Um, under, uh, let's see. It's under 8A, uh, discussion regarding the high school district 86 uh, boundaries in Burr Ridge. I'd like to, um, thank you. Uh, first off, I'd like to invite anybody else that would like to uh, sign up. I uh, want you to leave over there for a minute. I just want to make some opening comments. Anybody else would like to sign up to speak on this agenda item when after, after the, the board makes their initial comments? <coughs> I want to remind you to go ahead and sign up right there, and then we'll all call the names one by one. I'd like to thank, um, first off, my, my neighbor who, uh, who brought this to my attention and, and those parents from the Phil South, Phil South First organization uh, who alerted us to a little-known vote that was, that was being uh, taken in a couple days by District 86 on, on a meeting on August 21st. Unfortunately, when, the, when two trustees and I ended up uh, attending the meeting and spoke up, we, we started a bit of a firestorm, I think. And uh, when we caught the attention uh, of the, to the district's, uh, we called attention to the district's uh, second attempt to go for this tax referendum, and I, I didn't think that uh, my request for being fair and balanced would, would cause such a stir, uh, but uh, it did. I know it's, it's a complicated topic, and I don't, I don't want, I, 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 I'm assuming based on the, the sign-up sheet, uh, it's a, I'm not sure if, if they want to talk on the subject of South or if you're all from South. But I, wanted, I don't want to set expectations too high because as we look into this topic, uh, it's, a, it's a tree with a lot of branches and, and not a lot of options, I think, from one government entity to another. But we are uh, opening, opening the discussion and looking for things to talk about and, and also trying to find out what the residents want us to do. because. We have other things we could be doing, you know. <laughs> there, there's certainly other topics, other things we, we need to, to address in the village, uh, but this is certainly one that's been, I think, maybe dormant for a while. And I just would like to have, uh, at, at a bare minimum, uh, tonight uh, be able to open up dialogue and lines of communication uh, on it and uh, about a very important topic and maybe accomplish two things. Number one, get feedback from, from the residents as to what they would like, like us to do. Uh, and also dispel some rumors if, that I think, I think maybe we, just, we did that uh, at last board meeting, uh, that, uh, you know, like that like that the board is, is, uh, is true, it, that the thought that the board might be critical of Hinsdale South or not, we're huge fans and, and admirers of, of what they've, uh, of, the, of that school and, and some of their accomplishments. And we're also not looking to bus students from Oak Brook. I, I saw that one recently. So there's all kinds of rumors flying around. And we're not, and we're not, and we're certainly not anywhere near trying to file a suit or anything. We're just still exploring all options, uh, but it is a very important topic. So uh, I'd like to uh, bring it up to the, the board now. I, I, I believe it was uh, 
Uh, you were calling my, we calling my attention to speak first? I wasn't sure. I'd like to speak later oh, after, okay. the, after the residents, maybe. I was hoping to hear from some residents. I think that's what you do. Put it out there and then bring it to the board, and that'll be it. It won't go back again. It's the way it should be handled. Okay. You all okay with that? Yep. Great. Okay. Uh, the first person to uh, sign up is uh, Bo Harada. Uh, in relation to Bo Jackson? <laughs> I wanted to thank you for allowing me to speak. Is it five minutes? Yeah, actually, we're going we're, to we're try to keep it to three minutes. Three minutes. Okay. You know, give, or sure. take, give or take. Give or take. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, my wife and I, we moved to Burr Ridge uh, four years ago. Uh, she works at Hinsdale and LaGrange Hospitals, and uh, we were looking for somewhere to live as close as her work as possible. But we found a beautiful home in Burr Ridge with... Um, a bigger yard than any kid from the southwest side of Chicago could ever dream of, and that was that. Um, we have never looked back. I have two young daughters who will be attending uh, Hinsdale South. Um, the little school, uh, to me, the, uh, the remarkable little school that can and does year after year. Um, my growing pride uh, in that school is the reason I've kind of been drawn into this discussion. Um, I'm here to help to ask you to help me urge the school board to make the tough decisions that make the most sense. Um, I, my understanding is that they're putting together a survey um, to put out to the community to see what options um, might be best in terms of uh, boundaries between the high schools, balancing enrollment, things like that. Um, there's been talk of combining the schools into grade centers like LT. I, don't see that ever really happening, uh, and maybe it never should. Um, I attended the meeting last week at Central, and I'm, convert I'm convinced that the folks in Central would rather split the school district than to have their kids bust down to the south. The, the logistics just kind of don't make sense in terms of uh, putting all those kids on the south campus and busing kids you know, to back and forth across the, uh, both communities. So I'd like to talk about something that we can do and I think um, that would be to phase out the buffer zone. Um, it may be not this year, next year, but maybe in the next two to three years, uh, we can phase it out. It wouldn't cost much of anything except maybe uh, creating a couple new bus routes. Uh, it would save tens of millions by not expanding Central. Um, and there's a lot of really good students in that buffer zone that will make South even better. Increasing enrollment at Central will make Central even better. So this discussion should never be about property values. Um, it should be about making our schools better, doing what's best for our kids. Um, so my suggestion is simply to redraw the lines and fill south first. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Roger Kempa, they pick a microphone. Point of order. Yes. Uh, will the residents be giving their names and addresses, or just, or just names? We normally ask for addresses, don't we, when we have people speak? Actually, we, we no longer ask for addresses. We don't. No. Oh. Uh, we, that was uh, that was determined. What was that? Uh, By the open how meetings long ago was that? Oh. The open meetings that we stopped doing that a couple years ago to insist to require it, it is optional. But you should ask if they're residents and maybe perhaps what district they reside in. Uh, no. It doesn't matter. Well, just to be clear, any trustee or the mayor can ask for an address, okay. but they're not required to give it if they prefer not to. Okay. Just pass. It's been tradition to right. ask for name and address when we had uh, right. uh, the public speak. That, right. That's what I was referring to. Yeah, that, 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 was, that, was, uh, that was the case up until a couple years ago. So, okay, uh, Rod, I'm sorry, Roger? Uh, Roger, actually uh, reside in Darien. Uh, I'm sorry, you? Actually, I'm Roger Kempa, I reside in Darien, um, in the south zone. Um, well, a long time ago, I used to be a resident of Burr Ridge, 
141 Crammel Drive. And, um, but uh, I came with some things just to throw out there, so mostly educational, I guess. Uh, Hinsdale Central High School is overcrowded by what the board and administration call optimal capacity as opposed to actual capacity. Hinsdale South now has excess capacity for about 500 more students. The Board of Education chooses to ignore the gross inefficient utilization of facilities. And this is contrary to its own board policy 5.1. In fact, the board made matters worse by adding uh, a new residential neighborhood to the buffer zone with buffer zone status, taking students that were in to go to south and put them in a buffer zone and allowing them to attend central. What is buffer zone status? It means that students by board approval can choose to attend either central or south. And the board acknowledges enrollment preference for central is at a nine to one ratio. Central, central zone students um, can choose either central and south. However, south zone students, whether they're Burr Ridge or uh, Darien Willowbrook, are restricted to attend only South High School. You know, and if you go to Central, you could attend any high school. If you're in the buffer zone, you could attend any high school. But if you're in the South Zone, you are restricted to the South Zone only. Um, I'm not making this up either. So. This alone makes District 86 right for a enormous class action discrimination lawsuit at any time. Uh, Central High School is widely known to provide much higher quality education compared to what is offered at Hinsdale South. Parents with kids at Central know this. The, co the college is enrolling new high school graduates know this. The ranking services or high schools know this. Most, if not all, residents of the South Zone know this. It is only the District 86 Board of Education and current administration that say no. The quality of education at Central is the same as at South. The South Zone, yes, the South Zone, it's a fact, South Zone, zone uh, Values and property have been adversely impacted by this, this District 80 system, 86 system as it exists now. I might add that I called up about inquiring a vacant lot that went up for sale in the buffer zone, in this particular new one they added. And I asked, um, you know, what elementary school, middle school, and I asked what high school district, and uh, got an answer, Central. And oh, uh, central. Okay, yeah. So they didn't bother uh, that particular agent didn't bother to say, well, it's a choice between south or central. But what is the best way to address the in student uh, enrollment um, situation in District 86? Um, yeah, in a matter of time, eliminate the buffer zone status. Under the present conditions, all students in the dis entire district, central or south, buffer zone, the board cannot segregate and restrict the south community. And uh, south community should be able to send their kids to their choice of central or south. Um, com and they should be complying with their own board policy and use facilities efficiently. efficiently. Consider redrawing the central and south boundaries and determine the most cost-effective and objective way to accomplish all of this. Past boards, current board members have created this, what I would term a mess. Kicking the can down the road or ignoring the issues at hand are no longer options. So <coughs> if I could, there's a short um, statement from a student who approached the board I'd like to read. It was dated August. 21st of 17, statement by Anastasia Galinsky addressing 
the Hinsdale Township District 86. My name is Anastasia Galinsky. I am a seventh grade grade at um, Gower Middle School. As I explained to the last school board in January, my classmates that live in the buffer zone plan to choose Hinsdale Central as their high school. Why, why are they all choosing Hinsdale Central? Why doesn't anyone choose Hinsdale South? Why do they have a choice, and I don't have a choice, being in the South Restricted Zone? I think this board should be responsible for making all, Hin all of the Hinsdale High Schools a desirable place to go. Thank you. And that, that's from a strict, strictly a student, not involving any politics or any stuff like that. That's from a kid you know, that approached the board. So I thought I'd read that. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Now we have a Cindy, Cindy model. My name is Cindy model and I have been a resident of Burr Ridge since 1976. First in the Braymore subdivision and then in Crammel. All three of my children are Gower and Hinsdale South graduates and now I have two grandchildren that live in the Hinsdale, Hinsdale South district. We really like Hinsdale South. Uh, my background is that I am a former teacher turned realtor. My undergraduate degrees are in education and art, and I have a master's in the diagnosis and remediation of reading difficulties. I'm a former eight-year member of the Gower School Board. Interestingly, I was on that board when the high school board approved the buffer zone. When we were informed, as the Gower was the district that was most directly affected, I was concerned that a class system of haves and have-nots relative to both students and property values had been created within the Gower District. I've also been a licensed realtor for the past 15 years, working first at Adams and Myers in Hinsdale, and then becoming a partner in the firm Platinum Partners in Downers Grove. Although the radically different racial and socioeconomic makeup of South versus Central, as reported on the Illinois School Report Cards, points to serious bigotry issues in the fight to avoid balancing attendance between schools by a boundary change, or creating one school for freshmen and sophomores and one for juniors and seniors as Lyons Township does, my intent is to limit my comments tonight to those relating to property values because I think that that's really the only viable way that a village board can get involved in, in this particular fight. We all want two great schools, but that's a school board issue. Values of real estate are heavily dependent on school districts. While working as a realtor in the Hinsdale office, my experience was that clients would insist on being shown only homes in the Hinsdale Central attendance area. They had been told that that school was superior to South. This perception makes homes in the South District less desirable. That impacts time on the market for sales, the sale price, and appreciation. Burr Ridge is damaged as a village, and homeowners are damaged as their property value is depressed. Some also expressed, some of these clients also expressed that they didn't want their children in school with those kind of people, you know, they would say. Well, um, those were the clients that I could not serve based on my own personal code of ethics as well as the rule of ethics that realtors must follow. Apparently, Burr Ridge residents in the South Attendance area are not alone in the belief that the two schools are not as equal as our school board insists. There is currently an online petition being, being circulated by an Oak Brook resident entitled, Oak Brook Residents Must Attend Hinsdale Central School Only. It says in part, we put our hard work and hard earned dollars to build our homes and move our families here, all based on high school attendance. I'm gonna skip the part singing the praises of Hinsdale Central and its rankings. And then it goes on to say, pulling a bait and switch and sending Oak Brook to South would be disingenuous and a betrayal of public trust. And from the comments that people made relative to that, that petition, like the majority, we chose Oak Brook and Hinsdale Central because it is the right fit for our children. We did not choose Hinsdale South or LT or Downers North, and then they, they forgot that Downers has a South as well, um, or York or any other neighboring school. While these may be fine schools, they are not all the same, and not all the same was in capital letters. So, I, I, you know, I guess there is something to that. 
So apparently there's a pervasive belief that South and Central are not equal, which affects the real estate values in the South attendance area. I'm hoping that by taking a property value-based approach to the issue, the Burr Ridge Village Board might be able to shine a light on the problem and help move the District 86 Board to take a closer look before going to referendum to raise our taxes to enlarge Central when South has room. And thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. Thank you. Uh, Rosemary Kubik. Did I pronounce that, did I pronounce that correct? I wasn't, wasn't sure, sure if I read it right. I'm Rosemary Kubik, and apparently I'm pretty na naive. I learned a lot just listening to this. I came thinking District 86 is one district, and if there are two schools and it's all one district, and one school has too many students and one has room, it just seemed logical to me, <laughs> move some students. <laughs> <laughs> And if that means uh, getting rid of the buffer zone, perhaps moving the boundary a little bit north so that it evens out, it just seemed the logical thing to me. But apparently there's a lot more involved I didn't realize. And I read in the newspaper that um, the mayor spoke up last meeting, and I'd like to say I appreciate that. Thank you. I do think that. <laughs> Board does have a reason to speak up. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Richard Beck. My name's Richard Beck. I'm a resident of uh, Burr Ridge in the South District. And uh, a lot of my thoughts were spoken already. And yes, uh, School District 86 is a big mess, totally. And um, I was at the last couple of board meetings, 86, and I was at the August 21st, and I heard the mayor, and I heard a young gentleman give me some knowledge I wasn't aware of, and he was a graduate, I think in 97, uh, from Hinsdale South. And at that time, he said that basically, statistically, in their grade point stuff, it was pretty even, and everything was even. It wasn't affecting property taxes or any of that. And what a mess now. And it's gonna have to be uh, done in stages. Uh, it can't be just one, if they take one direction, it's going to have to be done in certain stages. And I feel the buffer zone has to go. That has created such uh, <laughs> offsets of feeling between, between uh, North and uh, uh, Central and South. It, it's, just, it's just put up such barriers. And naturally, as a retired realtor, it does affect the values of the real estate taxes. There's no doubt about it. It's obvious it does. And I feel that it is critical for the village of Burr Ridge to be totally plugged in on what's going on and somehow be effective to make sure that we are represented properly uh, to bring these ideas together. And it was very obvious at last week's um, a board meeting, which was held at Hinsdale Central, and 99% of the speakers were from Hinsdale and the buffer zone. And it seems like they're going to go for splitting the districts, uh, two different schools, one to Burr Ridge, one to Hinsdale. And I don't know if that's the solution. Uh, I'm gonna wait and see what more statistics and everything shakes out. But please be involved in this process. Thank you. Thank you. 
It was, yes, it was deemed that we don't have enough government agencies in Illinois. We need one more. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Michael uh, Mokrzycki? I'm Polish. I couldn't even pronounce that one. So you're going to have to, have to help me on that one. It's uh, Mokritsky. Mo, Mo what? Mokritsky. Mokritsky. I, I should have known. <laughs> good try, though. Good try, though. Okay. Um, so I think a lot of my thoughts have been said as well, so I'll just make a few additional key points. Um, first of all, I am a resident of Burr Ridge in, in the South District. Um, you know, my wife and I moved here about six years ago, specifically for the school districts and anxious for the area. And uh, I've now got a seven-year-old daughter and twin four-year-old boys in Gower West. We absolutely love Gower West. And I also, you know, wanted to echo the comments that the principal made last, uh, at the last meeting about Hinsdale South is, I think that's a great school too. And we plan to send our kids to Hinsdale South. And we will be doing that. But um, again, this, this, the whole buffer zone thing I think is, is the root cause, right? I'm, I'm an IT guy, a computer nerd, consulting. It's always about what's, what's the root cause and how do you fix the root cause? And really the root cause of all this is the buffer zone. And um, I really thought that we had litigated all this last year with you know, Phil South first in the fact that we had a 74% majority vote of no on the referendum. 93% of South voted no on the referendum. 56% of Central voted no on the referendum. And 74% of the buffer zone voted no on the referendum. So I'm really kind of confused and perplexed by the board and why they're bringing this back up. That, hey, let's do another referendum. I mean, that's not addressing the root cause the issue of the issue. And, it, and it's really just dancing around and saying, how do we solve this? And how do we really push this agenda just to expand central and get the whole district to pay for it? Um, so really, I think there's just a couple things. Obviously, you know, figuring out how to address the buffer zone issue is the elephant in the room. And I think if they are going to do this survey, we need to hopefully the village board can help us and, and, and the mayor and everything to if they're going to do this survey, let's get some specific questions on this survey, like should the buffer zone be there? Would people be open to phasing out the buffer zone over some point of time? Um, you know, I think we can work with the board that most of they're willing to work with us. But to some degree, you know, we've got to kind of stick up for South and, and for our, uh, our high school. So I, I really think I'm, I'm looking for the, the village here to really help convince the board that they, they need to make a pro, um, not just make a pro Hinsdale Central or a pro buffer zone choice, but a pro district 86 choice and serve both high schools equally. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Thank and by the way, Michael, I'm, I'm told that uh, by the uh, regional superintendent, there is, there is uh, no other buffer zone in the state. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, that was, that was and I, I don't, when I Google it, I couldn't even find it. I think I found one in California somewhere, but. Uh, Right, right. Okay, uh, Alan Ziffra. First off, I'd like to thank the board for having me. I just want to say a couple words. Almost everything I had in my mind covered before I'm speaking. Uh, I've been a resident of 47 years in Burr Ridge. Love it here. I just wanted to, uh, first off, stick up for Hinsdale South. <laughs> <laughs> Damn good school. My youngest son went to South. From South, he went to Yale. From Yale, he went to Northwestern Medical School. For Northwestern Medical School, he went to Harvard. We can thank South for that. Yes, sirree, Bob Rudy. I can thank him for that. But I, the point I want to get across are uh, the buffer zones. In the time I've been in Bur in Burr Ridge, the gerrymandering is just crazy. I mean, you can go from one block across the street, bam, 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 another home. Just grab an eraser. <laughs> and erase the buffer zones, and you know what? The problems will disappear. I guarantee it. 
Thank you. Thank you. Next one is Adolf Galinsky. It's nice to see some fellow Polacks in, on here. You know, it's a, I just want, to, just want to say, I, you, may, you may not know by my name, but I am Polish, so. Good evening, thank you for having me. My name is Adolf Galinsky. I'm a resident of Burr Ridge. I have uh, three children in the Gower School District, two in middle, one at West right now. Um, some comments I'd like to make. D86 boards written goals and objectives state that they will optimally utilize facilities at each school to reflect changing enrollment in the district. There's a number of reasons for this. Uh, managing and maintaining academic quality and rigor is one of those reasons. Protecting the interests of all taxpayers is another reason. Each school targets an optimum enrollment that enables 80% efficiency. Hinsdale Central is 16% above the target. Hinsdale South is 21% below the target. Okay, I'm gonna repeat that. Each school targets an optimum enrollment that enables 80% efficiency. That's what they call ideal. Hinsdale Central is 16% above the target. Hinsdale South is 21% below the target. This is after seven straight years of declining enrollment. The demographer's projections show South under the target well into the future. Applying this to business, in business, if I have too many customers, it's a problem, but it's a good problem I'm gonna work through and figure it out. If I don't have enough customers, it's a real big problem. And that's a concern to me. The actions and inactions of previous boards have come to roost. The D86 board today has a large problem to tackle. Many stakeholders are just now arriving to the discussion and don't, don't understand the fundamental issue. A lot of people are just being whipped up into a frenzy. The D86 board really needs to pause and explain the situation to everybody. In summary, I'm frustrated on many levels. As a taxpayer, I'm frustrated with the ongoing operational inefficiency across the district. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Lori Chang. Hello. Um, I also was at the Hinsdale uh, Central meeting last week, and I, everybody that got up to speak, they were from Hinsdale Central. There was no Hinsdale South people that got up to speak. I pretty much had to sit on my hands and just bite my tongue because the things that were said, the we are so much better than everybody else was so disgusting. And they, you knew what they were saying. It's pretty apparent that they are not willing to discuss anything about splitting schools or helping out um, uh, Hinsdale South. I think their main objective now is to split the, like the other gentleman said, split the school district. So there's two districts, two schools. I think that's their main objective. Um, I had mentioned two, I, I think it was two meetings ago that I thought, it, you know, if, they're, um, if they need more space at Central, why not take the administration office and move it to South? That's a good idea. I, I have no problem with that. But then, of course, somebody last night says, well, that's not a bad idea, but then we, can, we have so much stuff we can't store, we'll move our junk over to South, too. Yeah. Honest, honest to goodness. And I was like, does it ever stop? It was unbelievable and it was terrible. So anyway, and then I also uh, made a suggestion 
Because I had heard that um, they were also trying to buy Hinsdale Central some, uh, there's like three or four houses on 56th Street, I believe, and they wanted to knock it down and add it onto their fields. So there's no stopping what they want. I had suggested, why don't you have homeowners from South and Central go into the schools, see what you're talking about. You know, they say, well, this needs to be changed, this needs to be changed, and, but let's have some people that, you know, from both sides, look what the heck they're talking about because it makes absolutely no sense, none. Um, I think at one of the earlier meetings, <laughs> I'm sorry to bring this up, but people seem to like it, and it's very simplistic. Our school district is like, if anybody's familiar with the show, Everybody Loves Raymond, one family, two, two sons. One son, Robert, gets, or <laughs> Raymond gets whatever he wants, and the other son, Robert, well, we'll give you five cents or something, you know, just get lost. We have one district, two schools. Whatever Central wants, oh my God, we'll give it to you. You know, you need a new aquatic center, you need this, you need that. South, okay, we'll paint a couple classrooms for you. That is it. Hinsdale South is an awesome school. I have two sons there. One's in college now, one's a, all AP classes. He's top of his class, he's a senior. That is. That is the way we live. You can't live in a, a little cocoon. And that's how these people want to live. And I think it's horrible. And I think part of the problem, like you also said, is the uh, buffer zone is what started it. I've tried to go online to find out. I know one buffer zone they included. How many times they put a buffer zone in, uh, what the dates were, and what the uh, enrollment was at each school before the buffer zone and after. Because I'd like to see what that is, you know? If they were close to their their uh, top of their, you know, capacity, because it doesn't seem to it doesn't make sense. And um, I, I was just appalled at the way that people spoke last week. It was just I, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I just didn't think that people, uh, especially that amount of people, could get up there and say the things they were saying, and then just turn around and be okay with themselves. That's that's it. Sorry. Thank you for listening. Next is uh, uh, Mary Della Chiesa. Della Chiesa. Oh, Della Chiesa, okay. Della Chiesa. Della Chiesa, okay. I'm sorry, I forgot to use my hand. I would have. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Mary Della Chiesa. Forgive me, I am no longer a resident of Burr Ridge, but I was until four years ago, and I was for 30 years. So um, in 1983, we bought our first home, and if you're asking why I'm here, I'm here because I support this community, I support this village, I support Hinsdale South. And even though I am no longer living here, um, I'm still here all the time. My friends are here, my neighbors are here, my, my children's friends are here. So I'm always back and forth, up and down Stevenson from the city. Uh, in 1983, we bought our first home. We were there until 1997. My children attended St. Isaac Jogues. In 1997, we moved to London for three years. And 2000, we chose, we, were, we came back to the States. We chose Burr Ridge again. This, we couldn't think of any place else we wanted to live. And we were aware of some of the discrepancies in the high schools, but in our opinion, there was no choice. My children attended an international school in London. You know, Hinsdale South was a piece of cake, and Hinsdale Center wasn't even on the radar scope as a result of that. From 2000 to 2009, my son and my daughter attended Hinsdale South. They enjoyed great academic success. They enjoyed great athletic success. They enjoyed great social success. They went on to two great schools, not Harvard and Yale, but DePaul and Greencastle and Miami of Ohio, and now are very successful in their careers. So 2013 comes around, and I am an empty nester. We decided to downsize, and this is where I think it's pertinent to Burr Ridge. As much as I was very involved in Hinsdale South and in District 86, I was on superintendent uh, research committees. I was heavily entrenched in both the district and the school. Um, when it came time to sell our home, which was new construction in 2000, um, all the realtors that we got information from very politely, although it's navigating very, very uncharted waters, indicated 
the value of our home, as lovely as it was, perhaps wasn't as much as we were hoping for. And it had to do with the high school, um, which was really heartbreaking to me after having spent all this time giving all my tax dollars to Burr Ridge, supporting a school district and a school that I am so proud of. To find out at the end of the day, I feel like we gave and gave and gave and gave. And don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm thrilled with everything, our friends, our community, our education. But at the end of the day, when it came down to dollars and cents, it really didn't add up for us. So, uh, and I do believe that we did sell our home, but I do believe had my home been located a little bit further north, um, there would have been a higher selling price for it. So it does make a difference to the village of Burr Ridge. It does. It's in dollars and cents, and it's not besmirching any other thing other than just saying that you can you can quantify it. So. I don't know what the Village of Burridge can do other than if it's nothing more than lending their voice and making it heard, whether it's the residents or the board as individuals, to stand up and say our village is important, our, our taxpayers and our community is important, our high school is important, and we are not going to be a cash cow for you to make Hinsdale Central further your flagship school. Thank you. I think you get the award for furthest traveled, I think. <laughs> so. Okay, and next is uh, Sharon Williams. Hi there. Uh, I'm Sharon Williams. We've lived in the community for 15 years now. Uh, we moved from the city when my son was four. Um, He's now a sophomore at Indiana, and we have a fifth grade girl as well who's 10. Um, we live, well, in the South District, but we're unincorporated. So, um, you know, I come to you as the, the Burridge um, trustees and mayor, uh, and I appreciate you, you know, even taking on these considerations on behalf of, you know, Burridge residents as well as those of us who are unincorporated. Um, I don't know what the answer is going to be with, you know, in terms of, you know, balancing enrollment. Um, I do think, you know, getting rid of the buffer zone is going to solve probably a majority of the issue and of the problem. But I still worry that even after a potential buffer zone is eliminated, we're still going to struggle with south enrollment, um, you know, lacking. Um, my kids did not go to Hinsdale South, or the, the older one did not go to Hinsdale South. We did not send our kids to Annam Jeans or even the Burridge Middle School, and that was because those schools were not as academically challenging as the Catholic schools that we sent our kids to. And there are plenty of other families in the Burridge area, um, most notably those, the, the homes that are not in the Gower School District, that's why I kind of bring it up, because I want you to know that I think Hinsdale South is missing out on potential families who would be going to Hinsdale South but are choosing private schools or Catholic schools uh, as, as a, another means of you know, education. Um, when my son was in eighth grade and looking at the high schools, we did look at Hinsdale South. I was really hoping to you know, convince him that that was a school that would be academically challenging. I've heard of plenty of other neighbors that had sent their kids there. Um, but by that time, many of the kids that went to his school at St. John of the Cross you know, were navigating towards LT or some of the other Catholic schools like Naz, Fenwick, um, Bennett. And it's just hard for an eighth grade student to be the one, <laughs> one student to switch high, to a high school all by himself. You know, it's just socially very, um, challenge to, to do that and I find that a lot of the kids that um, you know do end up going to whether it's St. John's or probably even St. Isaac's for that matter don't really find themselves 
being in a position to go all by themselves to you know the public high school so they end up you know continuing on with Catholic education um, and some families that's you know been their plan all along so I guess the point that I'm making is let's be careful Burridge that we're not creating the same sort of story within our own village and that there are um, you know those of us who are you know south of 87th who feel like we don't have a choice that we we don't find those schools to be as academically challenging as maybe some of the other private schools in the area. And these are customers that could be going to Hinsdale South, but are choosing to you know, educate their children the private school route. So I guess just to make that point clear that that's always been a sticking point for some of these families as well. I'm not sure that um, you know, that issue has ever been addressed out in the open as well. Yeah, very valid point. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Betsy Levy. Hello. My name is Betsy Levy, and I live in Burr Ridge. I am here tonight to thank my village officials for taking an interest in issues that affect village residents. So, thank you. I'm also here to address the current District 86 conundrum, what to do when there is an overcrowded school and an underutilized one. I appreciate having more than one minute in which to do that. <laughs> so, so I espouse the Phil South First philosophy which is simple. The school board should utilize all existing facilities before ask, asking taxpayers for extra money for expansion. In the board's own words, in their own policy manual, it says, quote, to optimally utilize facilities at each school to reflect changes in enrollment in the district, unquote. And how should the board balance enrollments? <laughs> Phil South First does not take any position on this. That is the job of the school board. The school board has the right, the authority, the duty, and the obligation to solve this problem in the most logical, most practical, most respectable, responsible way possible. For the record, for the doings record, I am an upstanding citizen, and Phil South First is an upstanding philosophy. Also, for the record, whichever school a District 86 student attends, he or she will receive the finest education that he or she is capable of achieving. Thank you. Just for point of clarification, I'm not sure the answer to this one. Betsy, did you start Phil South first, or were you, were you part of the group that did that started the organization? Um, a few of my friends um, and I started Phil South first because we were looking for something to do with our community. Okay, yeah, but, but would you do a favor? If you, this, is a, this, this is going to be a, a long answer I should have known. Yeah. You know, I can't help that. I just, <laughs> I know I've been told. My friend Mary tells me all the time. Um, so we had read in the doings that they were going to be considering putting a food pantry in at Hinsdale South. And, you know, I read that and I thought, huh, I don't know if that's, you know, but I, I didn't think anymore. So another friend called me and she said, did you see that? So a couple of us thought, well, maybe that's not the best idea. So we went to the school board meeting to find out about this. And, um, and it, it looked like it was kind of a done deal. Um, and we asked a couple questions. And a, you know, one or two school board members, you know, they kind of agreed that it might not be the best thing. So they talked about all that. And as it turned out, then Ann M. Jeans thought that it would be a good thing for them. And so it, it went there. I can't say it was because of us that it didn't happen. I think it didn't happen because Ann M. Jeans said, OK. But meanwhile, we're at these meetings, and we're finding out something about all of a sudden some people want to um, 
get added on into the buffer zone. And we thought, holy cow, I think that the, I, I thought I heard Central was getting overcrowded and uh, never big fans of the buffer zone as, as it relates to Gower anyway. Um, we watched that. And uh, sure enough, uh, enough conversation, you know, safety issues crossing Plainfield to get to South was a big issue. Oh, they're only friends that they've ever had in their life live in Waterford. It was all these kind of crazy reasons why they should be in the buffer zone, but they got voted into the buffer zone. Interestingly enough, at the exact same time, that June 6, 2016, that these, this little triangle got voted into the buffer zone, at exactly the t same time, the little 181 area of Burr Ridge that's been in the buffer zone for 25 years, uh, south of 67th Street and uh, to Plainfield, and then a little bit on the east side of, um, of County Line where you think that they would be going to LT, but they don't, they go to District 86. Um, uh, this little portion was suddenly dissolved, dissolved. There's, I cannot find any information about how that happened. I know some school board members had no idea that that happened, so that was kind of crazy too. Anyway, the next thing that happened was we heard that they wanted to have a $94 million referendum and that they wanted to build all the stuff onto Central. And I've been involved for very many years and I've watched this happen time and time again. And so we really started paying close attention and that was me and my little friends maybe four of us. And then all of a sudden we saw some other people that we did not know starting to chat about this. And we talked with them. And so a Phil South First steering committee came about and we just thought that we needed to let people in the Hinsdale South area know that this was happening. And that's what we did. And that's how it started. And I'm sorry it took so long to talk about all that other stuff. <laughs> sorry. Well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, next is Marty McGuire. I'm Marty McGuire here. Oh, yak samash. Yak samash. Dobja. Gotcha. <laughs> but you're Irish. <laughs> And God I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would like one more chance at a little levity addressed to Zachary Model, if I might. Didn't your mom do a great job? She was awesome. Yeah. She raised me right, too. Thank you, Marty. <laughs> I thought that you would like that. Th this is really the words of conundrum. That's putting it even mildly, I think. But there was another word that you used, appalling. We've been, my neighbor and I, Rich, have been to almost every meeting. And I do belong to Phil South. So I want you to be aware of that. I also pass these out in all of my neighbor's mailboxes, not just today, but in the past as well. All in the hopes of something good coming out of this mess that we're in. And it is indeed a mess. If the school board itself is singularly responsible for doing the right thing, the absolute right thing, it would not be unlike this board of trustees. Would you say that I'm correct? You have to do the right thing. You have to make the best possible decision that has to be made. And they should be held to that. They should be the ones that are making the responsible decisions to correct the problem that we have so that we don't have to hire a law firm to file a class action lawsuit, which would be one option. Somebody brought that up. I thought it might be an idea. How do we get, how, how can you help us, you, our village of Burridge, Board of Trustees and the mayor, and that guy over there, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I didn't realize also a trustee. What can you possibly do to help us? Where can we get some ganoots here to put a stop to what's happening to us? How we are being mistreated as we are, especially if you were at, attended the meeting at Central last week. 
Rich and I, as we always do, sit in the very front. We want to see everything and hear everything. And the, the more appalling, thank you for that word, that someone got up and spoke on behalf of Hinsdale Central, the louder the applause was. It got worse and worse. That, that's not a heck of a way to live for anybody. And I, I, you, we felt like we were third class citizens sitting there. And I'm at least a second class citizen. <laughs> oh, I certainly hope that. I mean, I go to work. I, I have a job. What more can a person do? So is, am I asking the right question here? How do we do this? Who, how are we going to get this done? We're going to go to the meeting tomorrow night at the school board. Please show up, everybody. Please get your neighbors. They had 5,000 people, maybe not, at Hinsdale Central, but they had to use the cafeteria. Some of you were there, sure. So is there an answer? Well, actually, that, we'll be addressing that at the board. Right now, we're, we want to listen to everyone here first. And you'll be hearing a lot of that from us. And, 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 and part of it is, we're still, this is, this is kind of new territory for us, because this has been, as someone said, that, you know, it's the can that's been kicked down the road for a long time. Yeah. And uh, we're looking at all different options. But, uh, but the most important thing happening tonight is everyone being here tonight. Because I think this is going to be the most, uh, uh, most frequently watched uh, board meeting <laughs> of, of, uh, in the history of Burr Ridge. Uh, <laughs> In, in, in across D86, north and south. So uh, this is, uh, this is, uh, this, this is be far beyond anything I, 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 I uh, hoped or expected tonight. So, but we will be addressing that uh, when, when it comes back to the board. should have taken my glasses off. I didn't know we were going to be on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Uh, All right, well, thank you. Okay, well, well Marty, uh, Jinkuya, uh, Dobranos. Donuts and may the wind be always be at your back, okay? Okay, <laughs> thank, thank you. you thank you. Appreciate it. And uh, Dada Sambari. Good evening. Coming after uh, so many speakers, I may not have much new to say because so much has been said. But one thing common that I had seen, watched, heard is a passion among all the resident citizens for a better South and a better Burr Ridge. And a little bit about me and my wife. We moved here in 2002 when my oldest son was uh, in fourth grade. And now he's, he's gone to South. My younger son is in South, he's a senior at South. We love South. And if we were to do it again, we'll choose the same place. We'll be in South Burry. Because we love it so much. It's a beautiful area, beautiful school. We do have noticed some deterioration in the school, as everybody has mentioned. And I think it's everybody's responsibility in front of me here to give South what it deserves, what it had. And where the problem is, I guess, has been said about, much about it is buffer zone. Why is South empty? Not exactly empty, but 500 less. And why is Central overcrowded? Well, probably the buffer zone has to do a lot with that. Maybe you need to think about it. Maybe you need to consider redrawing the uh, boundaries to improve the efficiency of Hinsdale South. Uh, when the sc uh, school is full, probably the efficiency will improve. And another factor that has been mentioned vehemently and very clearly is the property values. We may not put the same significance to that as the educational standard of the uh, schools that we provide to the kids, but it's an integrated part of everything that makes Burridge so good and so beautiful. 
So think about it that you, all of you in front of me here have a responsibility towards the Burridge citizens, Burridge residents, and Hinsdale South. Thank you. Trustee Francis, are there any other signatures over there? <clears throat> no, there are not. Okay, well, that was the last person to, to sign up. I, unless there's a, at this time, I'd like to bring it back to the board and open it up for discussion. I, other, which trustee would like to talk first? Trustee Schiappa. Well, I, <clears throat> um, I graduated from Hinsdale South in 1990. My four siblings, one brother and three sisters, graduated from Hinsdale South. Um, I don't know exactly what years they graduated from. But now I currently move to this area, and I have three children, and I look forward to sending them to Hinsdale South as well. I think it's uh, a great school. Um, and uh, I look forward to a great education for my children there. Now, regarding the issue between Hinsdale Central and Hinsdale South, I have to echo what I've heard from the audience, that the buffer zone is an issue. Uh, this, this district is the only school district with the buffer zone in it. I don't understand the buffer zone. Why do we have a buffer zone? What I understand are boundaries. I understand the boundaries of Burr Ridge. That's what makes us a Burr Ridge resident. When the boundaries of Hinsdale, that makes a Hinsdale resident. When I call 911, I don't get a choice of which fire department can come, whether it's Tri-State or Downers Grove, <laughs> or what police station, what police comes, Burr Ridge or LaGrange. We need to define those boundaries and live by those boundaries. So I believe, as, as an individual, that we should just eliminate those buffer zones. Because, as I'd said before, if one person has a choice, we should all have a choice, right? Or we just live by those boundaries. It's pretty simple. As Rhonda had said, if one school is overfilled and one school is empty, you know, just change the boundaries and, and move according to what the population demands. So that is, that is my view, and, and I think that's if we echo that and we maintain that same message of eliminating the buffer zones, as I heard over and over and over again, and continue to echo that message to the board, I think maybe they'll get it. Repetition helps. Thank you. Thank you. Professor? Well, I'm sort of new to this problem. I had 28 years on the other side of town, and uh, several of my children went to LT. And I don't know how much they ever had the problem, but in all my years, I don't remember the problems that we had with LT. And I actually really like the idea of freshmen and sophomore in one school and juniors and seniors in another. I mean, anybody that's been to school, you know that occasionally the juniors and the seniors have a <coughs> tendency to pick on the uh, freshmen. So I like that idea. <coughs> Excuse me. Three years ago, I downsized and moved to DuPage County. And I started hearing about the problems with District 86. Uh, as I campaigned, I heard from a lot of the residents, and lately I've even gotten more emails, and my ear bended even some more. I've looked into the uh, matter the best I can, and to me, it's simple almost, and a lot of you people have brought it up. It basically boils down to two things. You have a buffer zone, and from what I understand, <coughs> the buffer zone was meant to try to keep the uh, uh, population of the two schools relatively even. Well, it appears the buffer zone is not doing it right now. So the question you've asked and I even ask is what is the purpose of the buffer zone right now? The buffer zone has no purpose, so why is it even here? And the other thing that I look at is a common is something that 
in my business years, and a couple of people have brought that up, is, is basic common sense. If you've got one school that's overpopulated and another school that isn't populated, you would manipulate so that you have the same amount of people uh, evenly split. To me, what doesn't make sense is why the school district board wants to spend tens of millions of dollars to uh, enlarge one school and leave the other school 30% uh, empty. To me, that makes absolutely no sense. And the other thing when common sense comes into play is they had a referendum and it was defeated by over 70%. Now they're spending more money, I understand, tens of thousands of dollars to try to get a different message out to try to change some of the 70% of the people that voted against it. Again, makes no sense, common sense to me, what that school board is doing. I mean, one of the things I notice, like you brought up, is when I look at my tax bill, District 86 is predominantly uh, on my tax bill. So I'm taking more and more of an interest in it. And a lot, I can understand what uh, a lot of you people uh, have a problem with. Uh, the other thing I look at also, if by any chance there are people that figure one school is better than the other school, in my opinion, it behooves the school board to move and do whatever is necessary to bring up South to the standards of Central. To me, that's the common sense. So, uh, like I said, those are the two things that I look at, is the common sense approach, and if they work hard to equalize the schools, then there won't have the problem of who wants to go to Central, who wants to go to South, if both of them are the same. I mean, that's the comments I have on it. Thank you, Al. Thank you. Trustee Mittal. Um, I have been in Burridge for the last 20 years, and we had a wonderful experience with my kids at Gower, Gower Middle, and Hinsdale South. They both went to really good schools from South, and they have successful careers now. So I'm very passionate about South, and when I heard um, all of this um, referendum, uh, news about the referendum, and everything that's been going on, it was very concerning. Um, <clears throat> I feel that the taxpayers already spoke in April when the referendum did not pass. And even the residents of the Hinsdale Central area do not want their taxes to go up. So that's the first thing that I feel that it's unfair to bring it all up again um, and hire consultants to review that because I'm not sure what the idea is behind that. Uh, second is, um, if you have fluid boundaries, how do you plan? If, if you are running a home and you have 10 people eating at home one day and you have one person the next day, how would you plan? How, is, how does a school district plan school facilities, teachers, curriculum, if they don't know how many kids they're gonna have for the next three years or four years? So that is a problem. Um, so I think there is a problem with the buffer zone, and that's, that's something, the common message that we've heard this evening. Um, and I think having a choice really negatively impacts the whole planning process. So just like, and, and the other concern I have is, just like our country has representation from all the states in the government, why doesn't District 86 board have representation from all the middle schools? So that it's a fair body. Thank you. Thank you. Snyder. The residents have spoken, obviously, and Mr. Adolf made, I guess, two or three specific points. I didn't remember your last name. I apologize. There's a number of residents, so I apologize. Galencia, good Polish guy. Right. But basically, you said uh, the school board has its. Uh, job and duty to serve and act and follow three ways. They're supposed to go through and specifically balance the budgets, balance the school systems, 
they're not doing their job. The question is why? We up here, we serve you, you come to the meetings, we meet with each other and try and come up with the best thing. Sometimes you're not going to be happy, but at the end of the day, we're trying to do what's best. We're not, we're not getting paid like large amounts of funds to come up here and sit and take our time and have review what we give. But again, if the school board, and I've been a uh, trustee at the College of DuPage, yes, that college. So yes, it's a lot of time and effort. But at the end of the day, we got things done. Here, it seems that they're just, you know, silently just turning their backs. Glad that Mayor Straub, uh, Trustee Zach, and Trustee Anita went to the meeting and opened up a lot of things for a little excitement. And I think as, a village, as, as what we do for a village, as the residents have come forth and stated, like, look, it affects us all. I've been a resident for 31 years in Burridge. And yes, I've heard when um, I thought about maybe moving and I was told by a realtor, oh, by the way, at the end of the day, I'm not leaving Burridge. I'm very happy here. But you were correct specifically in your three points. And if they don't address those three points, then really, what are they going to do next? Thank you. Um, anyone else? Well, Mayor, uh, thank you. Thank you for the leadership and the introduction. And, uh, you know, I said this before when I was running for office, and, and we've heard it here tonight. This is the number one issue I've heard over and over and over from our residents. And I, and I was sickened and saddened telling them, we can't help you go to the school board. And like people have here, said here tonight, I, I just get the feeling that the school board for whatever reason, isn't really representing the whole district, has, has some other interest in their mind because it doesn't make common sense to me, these choices and the decisions they're trying to make. You know, I received dozens of emails since we started talking about this. All of you are here today. I've even heard from folks who are in the Burridge part in Lyons Township, part of, the, part of the area, and they said, please fix this problem. We even know about it. It's a problem for Burr Ridge. And where I stand, you know, the board solely created this problem. They made it up when they started the buffer zone, and they've made it worse, as Mrs. Levy pointed out. They expanded it during the same year. They added 98 more homes to the buffer zone during the same year that they wanted 90 or $74 million from the taxpayers to expand the school. So there is absolutely no, no common sense going on there. And, and despite the overwhelming defeat of the referendum, they still believe that the solution is more money from taxpayers, and they're trying to find another way to force that issue. You know, overcrowding happens at a lot of districts, and they deal with it regularly. They move the boundaries around to balance the enrollment between <coughs> schools where they have a, a similar type of a setup as we have, or they do what they do in LT, and you have freshman, sophomore. I'm not proposing a solution. What I'm saying is that there's a problem and that the solutions the board is proposing are not are not the real solution. They're, they're straw dogs. And this thing about splitting the district apart, that's disgusting to me. That's like saying, instead of fixing the problem, we're going to amputate it and quarantine it and be done with it. I mean, I can't believe <laughs> I think some of these principles that, you know, they're t that these residents are espousing at these meetings, they would be disgusted to teach their children those in class. And here they are standing up in public and saying them. And, you know, I heard it from the residents. I want answers, and I want the problem fixed more than answers. And I see the board just doesn't have the courage to do the right thing. So I think we've reached the point now where we can say the board's actions, they're discriminatory, they're damaging, and the residents of Burridge, and Burridge as an entity, are suffering. And because of the board's decisions over the past decade or two, it appears to me that neither of the populations in the district actually match the breakdown, the, the breakdown for the whole district. Both of them deviate significantly from the statistical average of the district. And that's, that's discrimination right there. You know, so, so um, you know, if, if the district is fair and equal as the board claims, I don't know why these residents are screaming about possibly sending some kids to South. You know, it is a great school. I graduated from it. As my mother pointed out so eloquently, my sisters graduated from it. So many residents here. It is a great school. And I live here. You know, I chose to come back. I'm born and raised here. I live in the same town that I was born in. I chose to come here, and I hope to have a family here someday, too, and send my kids to South. So I want it to be a great school. I believe that every child in this district, they deserve an equal opportunity for an excellent education, a fair allocation of resources, and every taxpayer in the district, with or without children, deserves their hard-earned resources to be used fairly. Every taxpayer should be able to say that their home is in District 86 and receive the full value that it's worth. 
And the school board has an obligation, in fact a duty, as people pointed out, to use taxpayer resources fairly. That's why myself, along with Mayor Mickey and several other trustees here today, you know, we think there is something we can do. And today we started by having an open, honest discussion with our community members. And from everything I've heard today and over the past few weeks, there's widespread support in Burr Ridge for us to shine a very bright spotlight on the Wayward School Board and their discriminatory practices. I also believe the village has more options at our disposal than just a bully pulpit. Now we have a mandate from our voters to tackle this issue. Thank you for coming out tonight. Please stay tuned and thank you for your support. Our taxpayers and our school children deserve fairness, equality, and excellence from our public schools regardless of what part of the district they live in. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, will you entertain a motion? Well, actually, we have Trustee Francis. If you have left, uh, one option, if you, you have. Uh, yes, thank you. Like to speak? <clears throat> wow, what a mess. What a mess that that school board has created for you, the residents of Burr Ridge. I feel for you. As Al mentioned, I live on the other side of the tracks, on the, county, on the Cook County side. I went to LT. I grew up in Burr Ridge, went to LT. My children go to, went to LT as well. So we've been focused on the issues and problems of our school district, our District 107, our grade school, and District 2 for our high school. So you brought these issues to, to light, continue to bring them to light, continue to take them to the school board, but more importantly, get involved in the school board, get elected, change the, change the regime that is there now, change it and make it fair. We all want what's best for our children. We all want the best schools, we want the best teachers, we want the best curriculums, we want the best books, we want the best of everything for our children so they can be educated to the best of their potential and be successful in life. Uh, our goal is a fair and equitable school system for everyone in the village, Cook County side and the DuPage County side, District 204 and District 86. We all want that for our children. So I encourage you to get involved with the school district. Of course you all go to the meetings, but somebody get elected, somebody dispose one or two or three of those trustees, <clears throat> board members, that aren't giving you a fair shake, that aren't uh, acting in a fair and responsible way to, to make sure that you, the entire village, the entire district is treated fairly and equitably. Thank you. Trustee <clears throat> Pabeza has another, something to add? Similar to what Trustee Francis said, the number one way to change things is to get enough people interested to run in for the school board and getting elected. And I can tell you from practical experience, it really works. Before coming to Burr Ridge, I and my wife were involved and our kids were in sports and we were involved with the Little League and our association had to do everything. The park district did absolutely nothing and it was their fields and their uh, things and very few programs. In fact, I went to one meeting and they wanted to close the pool on Sundays because that's when it was the busiest. I mean, we, they had a bunch of old people that were running the park district and you know, I made the comment at one of our meetings, a Little League meetings that, hey, like Guy said, the way to change thing is to get somebody on the board. And they said, okay, loudmouth, you're the one. <laughs> and they, but they got behind me and we beat them. And my person being on the board, I was able to be in the meetings, be in the understanding, see what was going on. And little by little, we got to change the board and the park district and everything changed. It can be done. And I think that's one way of doing it because once they lose one or two board members, they're going to start taking us serious on what we're doing. One more comment. Trustee Model. So uh, I appreciate what, what both of the trustees said, and I don't know if they realize it's very difficult to get on the ballot here for the school board. You know, I've looked into the process, and I'm sure some of you have too. There's a caucus process here. It is right. not a slating. slating. 
slating process. It's not your normal uh, getting on the ballot, just raising the signatures. We had a heck of an easier time getting on this board than you do to get on that school board. You have to be interviewed and approved and slated. And it's legal. They do that in certain other bigger elections, but it's very unusual for a school board to have that process. And it's made it very hard for our residents to get slated on the board. They have to run as write-in candidates, is my understanding. Maybe someone else uh, knows more about that, but that's my understanding. So it's not quite as easy as it sounds to get this board fixed. I wasn't implying it was easy. So if it is a hard road, then so be it. But get on a subcommittee, get on a committee, be a write-in candidate, do, you know, get out there and get in front. And well, if you have all this the unanimous support from south of Plainfield Road, that's great. It'll be easier for you. Isn't it amazing how much we're learning tonight? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I, I, didn't, I never heard about the, the caucus uh, deal and getting out the sl having a, a slate to get on the, on the board uh, until you just mentioned it. And someone else mentioned something earlier uh, about the uh, Hinsdale Central has uh, residents have a choice of what school to go to. I, I heard that once before. I haven't actually read it anywhere, but I, that is just, just, now that's appalling. They all you know, have a choice. That, that's appalling. They all have a choice, except, except we don't have a choice. Right. And, However, however, I, I've seen, you know, I'm, I'm not a politician, I'm a businessman. I'm a God-loving, flag-waving businessman, <laughs> you know, I, who, have, who happens to be a mayor, you know, it just, you know, I'm learning all this, these, these tricks that are, be, are, are done in politics, and it's, it's, it's rather disgusting, frankly, but, but it's, it's also strategic on their part. You have to give them credit. You know, they, they really, they, they have this thing locked. Uh, and you know, they're, you know, and I believe that any anything that was, if that referendum ever got passed, that'd be taxation without representation. And that, my friends, is it has to be illegal. I'm I just have a simple question: Does anybody know the makeup of the current board? Yes, we do. Actually, there. What is that? Okay, the, the, the makeup, the makeup as I understand it, we have two from Hinsdale South, uh, actually that live in Darien, uh, that apparently are are supportive of the whole D86. Uh, we have uh, two that are in the, the buffer zone, and the rest are in Hinsdale Central. Uh, no one, no one from, else from Hinsdale South is there, and no one from Burr Ridge. So, to a certain extent, I hate to say it, but we kind of we didn't we didn't help create the problem, but we we, we, we we've ignored it for too long. We've ignored it for too long. We're this is taxation without representation, and and uh, but but I I've, I've heard of things as as Trustee Model talked about that. They make it so difficult, you know, why, why even do it? And it's, or it's very difficult to even, even do it. So it's a, but, but just means they're, they're a few years ahead of us. I think uh, uh, there's, there, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, ask our village administrator to fill you in to some of the things we've been, we've been told legally, which is, uh, which is not, it, it does not, you know, does not cast a, a lot of op optimism, I think, but I, but I think there, there's still some possibilities. And then I'd like to make some closing comments, unless somebody else wants any comments before makes make any comments before uh, Doug talks. Okay, actually, and and uh, now, actually, you know what? Before I ask the village minister to talk, I want to make one other thing very clear. You know, I I was involved with other other topics too, and and other concerns, and I and I wasn't really keeping my eye on this uh, until one of my one of my neighbors uh, brought to my attention. Uh, and then, and I, I, every once in a while, I run into Betsy, and then who actually got helped uh, help uh, pump up uh, Zach over here, but then it got to Anita, and really, uh, the, the, the credit for really getting this ball rolling, I have have to do with a lot with it with Zach and Anita, uh, or Trustee uh, Model and Mittal. <laughs> this is like M and M here, uh, they're close. They're, they're 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 spelled a little differently, uh, but ultimately. The person I think deserves a, a, a standing ovation if I, if, I, if I give it to her is the person who's about to talk next. That's Betsy Levy in the back. <laughs> I, uh, I, and I know she doesn't like that kind of attention, uh, and, but that's okay. But she did ask to speak next, so now I'm going to ask her to, to, to come to the microphone uh, before we make the closing comments. Because Phil South first wouldn't be wouldn't be as as motivated and 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 have the uh, the momentum if it wasn't for her and her uh, her associates uh, and team and members my very good that. associates absolutely but my friend Mary just said keep it succinct and I will they don't have caucus 86 anymore I don't know when they did away with the caucus to uh, elect a 
a, uh, a slate, but um, the, the seven members of the board who are on the board right now, uh, three of them ran as a slate two years ago, four of them ran as a slate this year, and they, had, they all had the same campaign manager, a uh, lady from Darien. So that's, that's it, and, and Burridge did have a write-in candidate who came in at the very last minute. He didn't get very many votes uh, because write-in candidates, I don't think, do get very many votes, so. And do you have any idea, how many votes does it take to win? I have absolutely no idea. 4,500. 4,500 to win? 4,500 plus one. 4,500 plus one, piece of cake. <laughs> okay, someone else had um, other comments? Trustee Mahal? I'd like to make a motion when you're ready to hear one. Actually, I'll let me village administrator first and have, uh, give his, his uh, uh, we, we did, not, did not ask the attorney to come uh, today, but for future references, we may. Uh, trustee, I'm sorry, our village administrator, our brand new village administrator, but, but here for 21 years, Doug Pollock. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, let me just premise um, uh, what I'm going to say is I'm reiterating what the village attorney has told me. Uh, I'm not giving you my opinions or thoughts on it, but rather just trying to reiterate the village attorney's uh, comments on the village board's uh, jurisdiction and, and uh, uh, jurisdiction to discuss school, local school board issues. So if there are any specific questions or if I perhaps say something not quite as artfully as the attorney would, I uh, hope you'll give me some deference there and I can address any specific questions to the village, attor village attorney at a later date. But to attempt to reiterate what the village attorney has advised me uh, regarding uh, the village board's discussion of local school board issues, the village board is certainly free to discuss local school board issues just like you would with any other local taxing district. Um, however, if there was a referendum pending, it becomes more problematic uh, for a local government to uh, electioneer, in other words, campaign for or against um, uh, local referendums that are being considered by another uh, unit of local government. Uh, a local government uh, body cannot spend resources electioneering, campaigning for or against a referendum, whether it's your own referendum or someone else's referendum. Um, oh, we're not at the referendum stage. We yet. are not at the which, referendum stage. Which, uh, so absolutely, so at this point, because of that, you're free to discuss potential referendums or potential school board issues. Uh, in terms of any action that could be taken by the village board, uh, the village attorney would, would uh, remind everyone that the school board is a co-equal level of government. They're not under the jurisdiction of the village board in any way. They are an equal uh, taxing district at the end of the state of Illinois. Um, and they act uh, independently of the village board. And they have, uh, of course, the ultimate, uh, as has been alluded to here, the ultimate uh, accountability of any local elected officials at the ballot box and uh, you know, electing uh, alternative candidates when one's not satisfied with the actions of a current elected body. Um, in terms of, of the village, a village board taking specific action, uh, uh, relative to a uh, school board or another local government, um, the issue would be that you're standing to do so and whether or not uh, uh, a village board would have standing to take action and that may be questioned by the other local government uh, body, in this case the school board, and it would just depend on the, the, the circumstances, but you'd have to establish that the village has standing to take some type of action and the, uh, that, that may be difficult to do, but uh, ultimately that's uh, up to you to decide that, whether you feel you have standing. So again, just to summarize, if there are, you know, if I, I think I reiterated that correctly or summarized that correctly on behalf of the village attorney, but if uh, there are any questions about any of that, I am more than happy to 
uh, take specific questions to the village attorney and come back to the village board or any resident for that matter uh, with uh, specific information. Okay. Do any board members have a question of uh, our administrator? Trustee Model? Um, thank you for that report. I appreciate that and I appreciate you uh, reaching out to the attorney and, and uh, getting us some information. You know, I, I certainly agree with uh, the advice we were given that we shouldn't engage in any electioneering or those type of things, but I don't think that's exactly what we're talking about here. I mean, to me, uh, you mentioned if there were some grounds that perhaps the village could take action. To me, you know, I'm not talking about trying to influence the election. I'm trying to get a uh, remedy for the village and the residents that have been damaged. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there may, you know, we need to make a case, but there could be, uh, there could be something there. They did not say that they could not take action. Is that correct? I think that's, that's correct. If you could establish standing in any legal case, have the right to take action. And can you tell me, you know, I did some, I'm not an attorney, of course, I'm a business guy myself. Sometimes I just play an attorney on TV. So, <laughs> no, I don't even say I do that. But, uh, you know, I did some, some, some Googling and it wasn't hard to find school districts that were suing towns for decisions related to TIFs and claiming that they were damaged by that tax money. Did you happen to talk to the attorney about any of that? Uh, yes, um, and his response was that it, the TIF situation may be a little bit different. In a TIF, there's a uh, TIF district uh, of villages directly uh, taking money away that would otherwise go to the school board, the, the increment, the financial increment that's generated in a geographic area that would normally go directly to the school board, does not go directly to the school board. And of course, um, that's a common occurrence for a school district. And in fact, the village of Burr Ridge was involved in a, in a TIF dispute with the local school uh, board and, um, and came out on the, the, the losing end of that. So yeah, that, the TIF situation does occur. Whether or not that's applicable to this situation, uh, the village attorney didn't, wasn't quite convinced that that was the case. But you get, mean, and, mean the argument with the property values? Is that the? Right. Well, if I can ask one more uh, question before. Uh, so I'm also aware that recent uh, decisions by the Attorney General have made it easier for uh, one uh, taxing body to claim damages uh, from a nearby taxing body, you know, certain decisions that they make. For example, uh, if they want to put in a, uh, an asphalt plant nearby that a lot of people are opposed to, you know, it, it might, might cause damages to the village, perhaps, and you might be able to take action in, in that type of a case. And, and perhaps in a case of this nature, you know, someone could make an argument that we're being damaged. Is, uh, is that unreasonable in that statement? Uh, no, you're correct. That's, um, no, that is not unreasonable. There was, uh, the village attorney did talk to us about, talk to me specifically about um, a village, or uh, uh, Attorney General's p opinion that uh, in that regard that one local body could and, and it's pursue damages against another. Right? And probably the attorney didn't look into this much deeper than just as deep as we got about electioneering. Is that, that correct? Right. Okay. Right. No. Any other questions from the board? Do we have any residents that would like to ask any more questions? Okay, just, it's just, uh, just one. Okay, I'll ask you to come to the microphone again, or either one. Based what I'm based on what I'm hearing, this is Richard Beck again. Uh, maybe to try to straighten things out, is it feasible for the village to file a lawsuit on the inequities that are going on between the, the schools and try to correct it through a lawsuit could uh, get the board to be a little more serious, the, the district 86 board. I'd like to know if, a, if, a, if the lawyer, village lawyer, would think there is a possibility to do that. Well, the short answer is there's absolutely the possibility to do that. Anyone can sue anyone about anything. <laughs> um, the question is, does a village have standing and would a court you know, 
likely find, you know, consider it. And that's, I think, the best I can answer that is the attorney said that that would be a, a difficult standing to establish. Um, and and I, I, that's about all I can tell you. Well, difficult, but not impossible. And I think that's uh, one of the one of the things that we're, we're, I think we're exploring those options. We're uncovering things as we go. It, we, we know one thing, that ignoring the problem doesn't make it go away, okay? Hasn't made it better. Uh, and and I took a little bit of a heat when I, when I, when I told the board that I, I said, I said, I want you to know that, that Burr Ridge is, is, is not just a suburb of Hinsdale. <laughs> yeah. and, and, uh, but I, I kind of meant that. I kind of felt like, you know, for a lot of years we, we've been having sand kicked on our face. Uh, and we're, and I think uh, this is, if there was a turning point, I think tonight is it, especially, and, and really because, uh, you know, the, your voices speak even louder than ours, uh, though uh, legal, legal uh, options are being explored. Okay, well, one more person. Would you, I need you, uh, you, have, you need to come to the microphone and only, only be, not just because we want to put you on microphone. Mary Delacchia is an ex-resident, but still here in my heart. Grazie, grazie. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, and I'm not trying to complicate things, but I do believe that there's power in numbers. Um, and as, as proud I am, as I am that everybody is speaking this way and the village of Burr Ridge wants to at least make its voice be heard. Has anybody approached Darien and the mayor or the village or the city of Darien to see if it impacts them directly as well. Uh, they take a direct hit along with, with us. And is there any chance of collaborating with the, I don't, Willowbrook, I don't know. It's split, I think. Is Willowbrook split, Betsy? Yeah. No. So, uh, but, but for sure, Darren. So, I, like I said, I'm not trying to complicate it, but I just thought, is there any sense to at least trying to have some kind of a joint stand with the other community that is directly impacted by this, the actions of the school board against not utilizing South? Well, well thank you for that. I, and thank you for uh, making public what I, I forgot to do last week. <laughs> <laughs> and, and actually, I, I was suggested to contact the, the Darien Mayor, I, I, I was on vacation, I totally forgot. However, I did contact the Willowbrook Mayor and I, and I, hope, it's, I, I hope it's okay to be public. That he had no idea what was going on. Uh, well. He had no idea about the, about the vote for the, uh, for the, uh, for the uh, uh, survey. Uh, he had no idea what was going, going on with this. And, and much, like, much like all of us, we've been kind of left a little bit in the dark and it takes uh, people like Betsy. It takes, it takes other residents that are that are getting involved. I, I know. Um, I, I know one of the residents. Uh, I, I'll just tell you his first name, Greg. He, he said, "You got to use Re Reagan's line: tear down this wall." <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and I, I thought that was that was classic. And and, and the efforts of uh, uh, the two trustees, uh, uh, Mittal and, and Model, that that have been doing it. Uh, but it's going to be a collective effort. It's not going to. This is a complicated topic. And it's, but, but we have, uh, I think, shine the light. I think is also another line that I, I wrote down from tonight, uh, that we are shining the light on it, and it's about time that we spoke up. There's, there's a, you know, the uh, trustee model had mentioned what he heard most when he was campaigning. You know what I heard most? The single expression that I heard the most often was, "I love Burr Ridge." That was it. Now, you hear that about other towns occasionally, but I hear it so much about Burr Ridge. I love Burr Ridge. I love Burr Ridge. I, love it. I like it so much I bought that domain name. <laughs> I love BurrRidge.com. I figured, figured I might uh, I actually direct it to another one. So it, it works. It, it, that, everybody loves Burr Ridge so much. But we have to remember this is a marathon, not a sprint. And we've got to, we've got to get on the board. We have to be, our voices have to be heard. Uh, collectively, you know, and it's and it's it's ground up, you know, top down. Okay, that's what's the way I, I do business when I'm trying to get a new client. It's it's ground up, top down, and and really the ground up is the voices of the people, and top down is what we're doing here tonight, shining the light on it, uh, exploring legal options, uh, and and having your voices be heard. And I, I I will make a prediction again. I don't know if if our, if our AV guys can track it, but I think this, this, this board meeting will be watched more often than any other one because of everyone that's here and, and the great speakers we had and the, and the 
uh, the honest uh, expressing of opinion and frustration and, and, and optimism that you all shared. So on that note, I'd like to thank you all for being here. And I, we have Trustee Francis has a, one more comment. Oh, I, I, I wanted the opportunity to comment on what Doug, Doug was saying earlier. But um, Doug, you did a great job interpreting the village attorney's letter. Uh, it's unfortunate you had to be put in that kind of a position. Uh, in the future, should we have these kinds of discussions about what the village attorney has said or hasn't said or can't or what we can say or can't, can't say or what we can do or what we can't do, I would ask that the village attorney be here to answer those directly. Mm -hmm. To be fair to Doug, we're putting him in a bad spot. Agreed. So, uh, but one thing the village attorney does say is that affirmative actions, affirmative actions taken by the village beyond open discussion of school attendance boundary issues at a meeting would be based on questionable legal authority. Interpret that as you will, but um, questionable legal authority. Right. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Trustee Mello. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate the opportunity to make a motion. I too read that same letter, and 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 uh, while well, that one sentence says that, there were some other sentences too in there. And so, along those lines, not to mention our residents have spoken. We were elected to support our residents and to take care of the health and welfare of the village. This is certainly a welfare issue for our residents, and I'm concerned about it. I don't think it should end today. So, along those lines, I'd like to make a motion directing the Village of Burridge staff and our legal team to fully research our options, not just give us a precursor to it, but fully research our options, and if necessary, work with other villages to get collaboration and support to back a plan of action, including what remedy we might seek in court on behalf of our constituents and or the village. Uh, Doug, do you want to... Uh, add to that or anything or clarify what the mo that sort of motion that, that that's the normal that's the SOP I think that's uh, uh, that's specific and okay. I think I'll uh, second that motion was it yeah. was it complete enough it was yes I will get that you'll get that we'll watch it on video <laughs> and make sure we get it word for word I'll take it down uh, word for word and we have a second from uh, from Joe yes Trustee Snyder also okay any further discussion I have some questions on the motion. Questions on the motion? So what, what, uh, Mr. Mono, what did you mean by village resources exploring options? Well, we had, you know, a very limited letter from, from the attorney. I think that the staff needs to go back. I asked some questions of the staff and I asked them offline as well as online here tonight. I'd like to get a little bit more detail answer about that, whether we do or do not have some standing. Again, I'm not an attorney, but I've talked to some other attorneys, and I think there could be a case made here. And uh, that's just one angle, though. You know, that's the, it's unfortunate that that's the only way I see it as to get the school board to pay attention here. But, uh, you know, there's other options. So I would like uh, us to continue talking about it, and I think it's appropriate to have a motion directing our staff, if they're going to spend time, resources, or anything on this, that we give them that authority to do so, and we can talk about it in the future. Along the same lines as you, you know, I'm not giving authority for a lawsuit. I'm giving an authority to look into our options and to keep talking about it. Okay. Would there be a dollar limit on this research? We don't have unlimited uh, staff resources. There have to be some limitation. How, how would it be to what end? I suppose when the board is satisfied that uh, either we have no more options or we have more options to take. I couldn't at this time make a prediction of a limit of a, of a dollar value. I don't know. Maybe they're going to come back and say, you guys have a great case. You need to do something for your residents. Or maybe they're going to say nothing. So I think we as a board have the action to stop it at any time. If it seems to be going nowhere, if we're wasting our, you know, we're, we, are, we are here responsible to our taxpayers, unlike some other bodies. So if it seems to be going nowhere, we can stop it at any time. No, you're right. We do have a responsibility to our, to our taxpayers, absolutely. But uh, responsibilities in other areas, such as the police department, the road program, um, zoning, uh, those types of issues. We have those responsibilities, and those are our first and foremost responsibilities. This is an important issue. I agree. We've uh, never had more people come out before like this. And the impact on the tax. The impact. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, we have. Oh, well, yes. come, oh, yes. come, to a zoning, come to a meeting sometime when there's a zoning issue, a controversial zoning issue, <clears throat> and we have to go over to the Marriott Hotel or Ashton Place because there's hundreds of people who want to talk about a zoning issue that affects their property values. Right, Al? Oh, yes. <laughs> and we go till 12, 30, 1 o'clock at night listening to each and every resident that wants to speak, speak 
but, your piece but about I, the zoning issue. Uh, just wait a second. Uh, uh, Trustee Brett, uh, uh, has the first. thing, you know, I, like I said, now that I'm on the DuPage site, I understand where the problem and that there definitely is a problem on 86. But the one thing we have to look at, like Trustee uh, Francie brought up, what uh, if Doug could do something or uh, do something and do it. But yes, we are responsible to the taxpayers. But unfortunately, we're responsible to all of Burr Ridge, which means the other side of County Line Road, we're spending their money. So we have to be careful on how far we go. And like the attorney said, it's another taxing district. And once you get legally, the thousands of dollars start going up like crazy. So I think we really have to <coughs> have some understanding of what what kind of time and money is involved. And I think to be fair to those other residents on the other side of County Line Road and to those residents on the other side of Plainfield Road, we have to <coughs> examine their issues and their concerns as well as they relate to their schools and their park districts. To be fair, there's issues in the other school districts. I think that's a great point. So how far do we go and what resources do we have available at the village? What funding do we have at the village to be able to do this? We, well, have, trouble, we have trouble meeting the necessary commitments for our road program. Well, Trustee Francis, I don't, I don't know that we have a, an answer to that one uh, out of the gate. I think it's, a, again, kind of a, a portrait in progress. Uh, we don't know, uh, but we probably have to take a little closer look at the, obviously, the budget and whatever other options there are. Uh, but right now, we have, we have it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, you know, it's a can of worms. We don't know what, what it's, what's going to happen. But for now, uh, the dialogue and, and internal administrative and discussion, I, I think, is a, I, I think clearly within that realm, and, and we'll make it a, a board decision later. Uh, what uh, if there's a, a maximum cap of exposure that uh, that we choose? To well, I'm, I'm okay with the dialogue. I'm, I'm fine with the dialogue. This is great. The residents come out and speak. Uh, it, it's, it's great to see this, and they're all united and behind one cause. But they are not the majority in the village. There are the other uh, County Line Roadside and North Plainfield Road that have to be heard from also. They didn't show up tonight. But they are taxpayers also, and those are their well, you know, funds I'd, that would be spent on a lawsuit. I seem to Some recall, and, I, and, and, to, and to, but to that, to that, Trustee Francis, you know, we we installed a sidewalk from Bridal Path to County Line Road, uh, actually, and beyond, uh, and and. And that didn't benefit all the residents of the village, but it was it was money that it was the village decided to spend. So that's that's the kind of decision that we have. This is not this is not an unusual situation, uh, whether it's a, whether One it's a sidewalk, sidewalk or a project. There are an equal number of sidewalks on the on the DuPage County side as well that serve District 86, Hinsdale South and Hinsdale Central. So it's not what's, it's not about sidewalks. Oh, it's. It's, a, it's about what's fair to the residents. So I guess, all the residents I guess he didn't like that analogy. I'm sorry? I guess he didn't like my analogy. Huh? <laughs> but I'll help you with another one <laughs> if you want. But, I, you know, I'm just, sure, we're, we're listening to these residents. They have great points. There's a, there's a broken school system, uh, a dysfunctional school board. I agree with all that. Okay, but uh, do we have any authority? The village attorney says we don't. Uh, but I'd like him, him here to answer those questions. Do we be fair to all the residents of the village? We have to be. Right. Agreed. Agreed. And uh, I, oh, by the way, I, I, I chose not to have the attorney here tonight because I thought it was a little, little premature. I didn't want to spend the village okay. resources tonight. I appreciate that. I understand. Uh, I, I'm not. And also, I, you know, I, you know <clears throat> this may come as a surprise, but I actually found two attorneys sometimes don't always agree. <laughs> you do find attorneys that don't, that don't agree. Any and, attorneys out there that he's making fun and, of? And, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and, and so I, and I, and I think uh, to Trustee Model's uh, point, I, you know, we, a, a second opinion might be in line. So, uh, and I, I believe we can get those. So it, but, but, but I do know one thing, it's, it's a real issue, and it's a real challenge and a problem that we have. Uh, and it's, a, I think we, we turned the corner tonight. I think, uh, I think what we've done so far is, is excellent. I think. Uh, making making the motion it's already been a first and a second uh, and uh, i'm going to ask for a, a vote on that if there's, if, uh, i'll ask for comments one, one last time but i think that's the, uh, the the most logical next step and uh, and 
and also a second opinion as well. So uh, there's, been a, there's been a motion and a second. Uh, is there any further discussion on that motion? Trustee Pavetta. Okay, now we're basically what you're saying is that the village is going to provide resources to look into this. And Doug, do you think you can have an answer by meeting with the attorney? You can have an answer by our next meeting. Well, I can. What, our, I can what have, our options are? You know, I, I'll, I'll caution you right there that there's not going to be an answer. Well, the only it's thing I'm looking at. The only thing I'm looking consider. at is I think in two weeks there's a minimal amount of expense that can be uh, spent in coming up with some answers, and by having an answer next week, I'd vote for. I vote in favor of, of going ahead, I, but if uh, if it's just an open-ended deal, I I couldn't vote for an open-ended deal. I would expect that um, that they they'll be able to do further research of case law and and, and state statutes and uh, have a, a fairly comprehensive uh, report for you within the next two weeks. And okay, fine. I would I would ask. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm confident that. And, uh, and and would it be and would it be fitting uh, to ask for a second opinion? I guess my suggestion would be to wait and see what the first opinion is. You know, see if it's if if you feel like it's conclusive or provides you with the information you need to make decisions or not before uh, before you ask for further opinions. No, you, the big thing here. Uh, Mayor, is that uh, uh, it's not a matter of a second opinion. Our attorney specializes in municipal law, and it's out there on what we can and cannot do. It's not, are you guilty or not guilty, and are you in defense and offense? We, when we have our attorney here, he's telling us what we can and can't do in regards to the laws that are in this state. And uh, there's enough of them there that uh, yeah, are problematic. So I don't think I, it's just a matter of a second opinion. And I and I that, that, that could very well be, but I, I believe municipal attorneys disagree with each other too. I uh, and just exploring the options. This is this is not this is we, we don't have an option here. And we've got we've got to look at all uh, all available uh, you know options ourselves. You know to just see what we can do. Again, top down, bottom up. I, I think the residents have spoken. I think the residents have, uh, are also going to uh, have a, a renewed uh, level of uh, information on this. And I think the more uh, we have to do more of that as well uh, and, and get, the, get the word out to future meetings, get more people to, to the District 86 board meetings, et cetera. Uh, it's, again, top down, bottom up. Uh, but uh, we'll get, I guess we, our attorney will do the best they can in the next, uh, next two weeks. I, I don't know that it's going to be a dead issue then, but we'll, we're, they're, going to, they're going to look at it. Trustee Snyder. I think both fellow trustees have brought up the point of costs. I think that Doug was given enough information on four or five options from either the impact on taxes, fiduciary responsibilities, things like that where he can talk to the attorney within a few hours and come up with some suggestions that think and review. I don't think it's going to be a very cost or costly discussion with our attorneys when it's something like that hone it down to two or you had enough good ideas here that were brought to the board that we can go to the attorney a good attorney is going to say look you got five good ideas three are valid two are not here's your options you know what three four hours invested and you're done then you come back to the board and uh, with fellow trustees and we can make a decision from there trustee Scalpa. well i think i mean this issue has come to, to us because of a pending referendum for a second time. Now, I was involved personally with the, the last referendum that failed in promoting the defeat of that referendum. And I worked with other volunteers to defeat that referendum, and we were successful in defeating that referendum, all with, with volunteers. So I think that's you know, something that should be said for for that. And, um, and so that's, I, I understand that we want to protect our, our residents. Um, can you repeat the, the motion for, 
for me? So, so my motion was to um, direct the Village of Burridge staff, along with our legal team, to fully research all of our options and also perhaps work with other uh, village boards in a collaborative manner and then report back to us on a possible plan of action, including what remedy we might seek on behalf of our constituents and or the village. Okay, there's been a motion and a second. There's been discussion. I don't think any, any new news, new questions are coming up. Um, may I have a vote? So, Roll. clarification on the motion? It's with a time limit of two weeks? No. No? Why? Because said it could be done in the, I don't want to give open ended. Well, time and money. You know, I, I, uh, I, uh, the, the vote, it's going to be, it's going to be uh, either reworded or vote as it, voted as is. Uh, that's that's up, up to the person who who uh, made the motion. Yeah, I think, uh, and some of you may know know Robert's rules as well, if not better than me. I think the appropriate, if someone wants to make a motion to amend the motion on the table, they can do so. In that case, this case motion, the amendment being that um, it's limited to the next two weeks that motion is seconded and approved, then the motion becomes amended. The original motion is amended. If it doesn't get approved, then the original motion Point stands. Forward. Next week, we can always, you know, if we're close, we can we can extend it two right. weeks, but I don't want to go, I can't approve one that's open-ended completely. <clears throat> well, uh, my understanding is that if I would like to amend my motion and the second agrees, I can amend the motion. Otherwise, if I don't choose to amend it, we can call the vote and it'll pass or fail and someone could make a different uh, a, a amendment maybe with the two week limit. You know, for me, it's hard to say that because again, we, we don't know all I'm asking. And, and I think this is exactly what you were saying, guys. We, we don't have the answers. You know, you, you, you said yourself, we need to, we can't, we can't make a decision here. We don't have information and all I'm asking is we need to get the information so we as a board can make an informed decision if we want to continue with this or not. I don't know if the attorney is going to have an answer for us in two weeks, and I don't know if it's just the attorney that we're going to be talking to. You know, you might be talking to the mayor of Darien. You might be sending a letter on behalf of the village board to the city of Darien saying, do you think this is a problem too? Have you talked to your residents? So, I'm not asking for us to have a blank check on it, but I think we're responsible trustees. And if at the next two, you know, next board meeting, we think that this is a black hole of wasted money, we will stop it immediately. But I think if we come back with some good information, I would like to keep the discussion going and, and, and stop it at that time. So, you know, I'm certainly not asking for a blank check. I'm not asking for irresponsible spending or anything of that nature. But I, until we get more answers, I can't tell you if this is going to be solved and, or, you know, if we're going to need more, more investigation after, after the next report. Like I said, I, I, what's wrong with two weeks? You're doing it just the opposite. I said in two weeks, if we're close, it makes sense, we can extend it. You're saying we might not have them, uh, not two weeks, so you just want to leave it going. I would rather go and make the, I would have, uh, I would be for a motion that we would go in two week increments to see what we're doing. I don't want to go into a black hole. I understand. So would you, would you like it to be a vote every two weeks or just that it, it, it you know, every a vote every to, ex two, yes, we could vote to extend yeah. more to gather more information wherever we go but it makes no sense to just open a black hole i can see you every two weeks where our progress is and what we want to do we want to vote on what we want to do what we've learned in the two weeks since this, there are so many unknowns as you pointed out zach it, it would be in our best interest to go on a two-week approach so we can assess where we're at and what we need to complete the task at hand nothing in our budget anywhere in our budget has is open-ended nothing there's not one line item that's open-ended everything is accounted for and we just can't have an open-end uh, assignment like this uh, w without some checks and balances. The check and balances being assessing it every two weeks, uh, I, I, would be, I could support that, but I cannot support open-ended at all. That's disrespectful to the residents of District 86 and 204. Yeah, I, 
I, I heard from the residents and I heard they want us to do something. So I, I want to keep doing something until we, we have exhausted our options on behalf of our residents. And you know, I heard from residents in the, in the LT zone. I heard from residents that aren't even, aren't even subject to this. This is our, the reputation of our entire village. You know, we heard about what realtors say when, when they sell homes in our village. It's not just, it's not just the D86 area. The whole village is damaged by this. So I, I'm, I hear what you're saying, and I respect what you're saying, and really I agree with you. But I can't, I can't change that motion. I don't feel in my heart to change the motion, and uh, you know, I think we need to do what it takes until we decide that we should not continue any further. And we can revisit that in two weeks. We can revisit it in one week. We can revisit that in 10 weeks. But we, we meet every two weeks, and I'm sure we'll get the opportunity to keep talking about well, it. It would be wonderful if we meet every two weeks, extend it every two weeks, yeah. rather than leave it open. Get a status update, and then uh, extend yeah. it if necessary, or if we agree to. It's, it's, it's cautious, uh, judicial money management that we're entrusted with by our residents. I'm not inclined to change it, and I suppose if it fails, we can make another motion. I'm calling the vote. Roll call, please. <clears throat> Trustee Motto? Yes. Trustee Snyder? Yes. Trustee Schiappa? No. Trustee Francis? No. Trustee Paveza? No. Trustee Mattel? Yes. Mayor Straub? Yes. Motion passes. Under other considerations? For announcement deliberation, I know most of those are covered under uh, village official, under, under number 10. Uh, can we, you can wait till the number, number on the village officials, okay? I, any other residents would like to address the board again at this time? One. Oh, we have we have one one over uh, the woman with the red hair first. I wasn't going to say anything, but I found that I had to. My name is Claudia Manley, and I was a member of the Hinsdale High School District 86 School Board when they did take the vote on expanding the buffer zone, and I was the sole vote against it. And I went home and I kind of hit my head against the wall because it just, it doesn't make sense. So I'm here today because it's an it's a, it's a issue I'm interested in. I, I think that there is, it's discrimination, plain and clear, because the, um, the number of minorities in the South Zone that attend the South School is disproportionate to the amount that attend in the Central Zone. And, you know, quite honestly, it's redlining. And that's what I called it when I, when I, I took the vote on it. And in the spirit of that, I would also, I've also determined that your attorney is Klein, Thorpe, and Jenkins, and if, I, I hope that's correct, but if it is, they do represent a lot of school districts, and there's quite um, a possibility that could, there could be a conflict in the fact that they represent other school districts. So I would really urge you not to use them, but to go to a civil rights attorney who specializes in this, who knows the law, inside and outside rather than going to a school district attorney who kind of you know specializes in municipal law and school law and all of these different things so if you are gonna really take a serious serious look at it and i really hope you do because the school board is not going to do it um it's part of the swamp which is why they're not doing it and they never will do it there's more of them than there are in the south zone so every time you run you're gonna get outvoted and you're not gonna win. It was a miracle that I managed to win, and then I ended up hitting my head against the wall for four years, so. <laughs> well, that's one more thing I just learned tonight, and that's just another angle. That's a great angle, Claudia. I thank you for, for uh, uh, doing that. I would like to uh, direct the village administrator to find out uh, how many school districts that Lanthorpe and Jenkins actually represents, uh, to see if there might be some type of a conflict of interest or Bias, bias? A bias, yeah. Uh, just in case, could you do that, please? Yes. Thank you. you. Just do a conflicts check. Hi, Lori Chang. I had one uh, question. You said the village of Willowbrook didn't seem very interested. No, 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 no. They, they didn't know about the vote. 
they were they, they had no idea what was going on with the survey. Uh, they were they were they were not the 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 the, the, the mayor did not know. Uh, Let me ask you something. Does the mayor Willowbrook live in the buffer zone? Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. There you go. <laughs> so I, may I? May I just add, and I, I won't, I, I won't expand on this. Uh, that okay. that wouldn't be a concern of mine if he if he does. Okay, I just we do trust me on that one. Okay. Because there was a second. Wow. Can, can't redo it. Yeah. After the second. Sounds like shit. Oh. This is <laughs> this, this, this like this is like a movie. Before yeah. the second. Roger Kempa from Darien, and um, I just wanted to announce to the world, I'm Polish, too. <laughs> <laughs> and, and further, that for all the Polish people here tonight, I'm willing to take, take them out for lunch to Old Warsaw. Oh, right. Okay? And uh, I, I do hope the city of Darien would... Uh, see this meeting and have a similar type meeting for all the residents in mm -hmm. Darien affected. So, and uh, I think they are aware of this meeting as well as the meeting tomorrow night. So, but uh, thank you, and uh, uh, I'm Polish, okay? <laughs> and, and, and just for the record, I even married a Polish girl. Huh? <laughs> So I am all Polish. <laughs> okay, we have we have one more resident that would like to speak. Yes, Betsy Levy. I'm tired of hearing myself as well. But I forgot to mention. You know, you asked about you know the Phil South First group, and I was kind of talking about our, our little steering committee. But when I look around this room, easily two thirds of the people here really actually helped out in the campaign to defeat the referendum. So yeah. easily two-thirds, maybe three-fourths. And so it's, it's not just eight people. It's a whole lot of, and it's not just we've been classified as a little group of old people who don't want to pay more taxes. And it's not, because Michael is right down the street from me, and he is a very young man. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, well, if no one else is uh, like like to join us, uh, we, uh, reports and communications from village officials. Uh, I would like to make uh, one announcement. And this way, this came to my attention a little too late. We we had a we had a resident that um, asked the village uh, that made us aware that that Constitution Week is September 17th to the 23rd, and and she asked us to uh, do a proclamation making it officially a uh, Constitution Week in the village. Unfortunately, I just got this today. So it was, it was late, but I did want to uh, give the, uh, 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 Jane Hobson a, 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 a big uh, thank you, and, uh, and also let, 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 let the residents know about this very important week, Constitution Week, September 17th to the 23rd. So. And any other village officials? I'm sorry, I'll go. I'll go. I wanted to bring up the scheduling for the strategic goal setting workshop. Um, I was, I, as all of you know, I've polled uh, the board members a couple of times trying to find dates. And uh, the conclusion was that you're a very busy group, very involved in the community and, and, and activities. Um, I was able to identify only really only one date out of a dozen or so where our consultant, our staff, and uh, the trustees were available between now and November 15th. Um, there were several dates where just one trustee was not available, but I really want to do this with everyone, um, make sure everyone is, is available. Um, the. Uh, I also identified two village board meeting dates that we could meet, that um, we could do one of the workshop sessions, and I would either you know, try to keep the agendas extremely light or cancel the regular board meeting and schedule a special board meeting, 
Because quite frankly, if it's routine business, I'd rather do that with one or two people missing than have do the workshop with one or two people missing. So um, right now I'm looking at uh, Monday, October 9th for the uh, first workshop. It's a regular board meeting day. So again, I would keep that agenda light or cancel it altogether if, if that's agreeable. The other date, the only other date that I had everyone available was Wednesday, November 1st. However, I'm afraid I might be down one police chief that night. Uh, but if that's the only date we could do it, um, I'm sure Deputy Chief Loftus would step up and fill in for the chief. Um, so unless uh, someone wants to relook at their dates again and uh, have be reconsider the whether they're available or not, I would suggest we proceed with Monday, October 9th and Wednesday, November 1st, be from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. I have a conflict Monday, October 9th. Okay. So I wasn't planning on attending the board meeting. Um, I'll see if I can rearrange it. Okay. Uh, I'll reach out in, individually then to a couple of you on some specific dates to see if, and, and I, I, I completely understand. I mean, I don't want to, uh, I completely understand you have other obligations, but uh, if there's an opportunity for someone to reschedule, if they're willing to do that, I'll reach out to you individually on a few of those dates to see if we can't get something uh, scheduled. So thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, oh, and related to that uh, is the fact that I wanted to really publicize that our community survey that we do every two years is online now and available for the public, any resident of the village to go to our website. In the uh, uh, left-hand side of the home page, you'll see an icon for community survey. It's a SurveyMonkey uh, online survey. It's just very brief, you know, 10 minutes at the most, I think. Uh, and we want to get as much input on that as we can. Uh, that feeds into your strategic planning that I was just talking about. That information will be used by uh, the village board. In their strategic planning it will also be used by the village staff to figure out where we need to focus our resources and where we can do better and where we're doing well. And maybe we can expand on that. So I encourage the village board members and the general public and all the Burr Ridge community to go to our website and complete the uh, online community survey um, with information about uh, village services and village programs and the community in general. Thank you. Anyone else? I have two, two uh, communications. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the first one being uh, related to Burridge getting its own zip code. I know maybe this is an issue that a lot of you are concerned with as well. So I took this one on. I'm just a real go-getter here. And uh, <laughs> we, we got a letter. Uh, I, I talked to all the three congressmen uh, that represent uh, our fine village. We happen to have three uh, bipartisan, as a matter of fact, one re Republican, uh, Peter Roskam, and two Democrats, Dan Lipinski and Bill Foster. All three of them absolutely agreed that Burridge does need its own zip code, so they wrote a letter of support. Uh, I also wrote a letter as a village trustee to the post office uh, requesting that they begin the process of surveying the village to see if we uh, would warrant our own zip code. So that along with the letter of support from the congressman was sent off to the post office. So while a lot of things in Washington they don't agree on, there's one thing and that's the village should have its own zip code. So hopefully that process will, will happen and hopefully uh, the post office will evaluate favorably that we do get our own zip code. So uh, the other one point uh, uh, that I wanted to bring up is that Trustee Paveza and I both attended the 50th uh, Vietnam War comm commemoration ceremony with other Cook County officials at Brookfield Zoo last week. That was a really uh, awesome ceremony. You know, I was kind of moved there. I didn't expect to be. And there were hundreds of veterans there. 
And uh, you know, you see, you see the, the age of these veterans there, and they're perhaps one of the largest group of, of veterans, you know, other than from, from the more recent wars that we have. So it was great to be part of that and honor them and their service. And at the end of, of uh, the reason I'm mentioning it, at the end of the ceremony, you know, they gave out lapel pins to all the veterans, and it says, a Vietnam War veteran. And on the back, it says, a grateful nation thanks and honors you. So uh, there was a gentleman from Burr Ridge, I didn't catch his name, he said he's a resident, he was a veteran, he also worked at the zoo, and he came up to me and he gave me his lapel pin and asked if we would please place it at the memorial here in Burr Ridge at the Veterans Memorial. So I'd like to ask uh, Mayor and other trustees, and in fact all of you, if you'd like to join me afterwards, I do plan to uh, put this pin in our memorial. I hope you won't charge me with vandalism and uh, <laughs> just uh, share, it, share it there uh, for everybody to see. So I wanted to let you know. And um, on that note, let's, let's give the Vietnam uh, War veterans a round of applause. <laughs> Having just got back from Gettysburg, that's where I, sorry I couldn't be there, but I, I, yeah, that sentiment is uh, alive and well, and I'm, I'm so glad that you guys were able to. So, uh, anyone else? Okay. Trustee uh, Francis. A question of uh, Doug. Um, we've been in the uh, franchise waste hauling agreement now for uh, a month and a half, approximately. Any updates, uh, concerns, issues that the board needs to be made aware of? I don't believe so. I'm not aware of any. Any major problems or issues? I think um, things are going uh, going quite well. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now, are there any non-residents that'd like to address the board for any reason? May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you again. God bless you all. Thank you for joining us. The meeting is officially adjourned.